And the meeting is broadcasting now. Cliff, can you see me? Yes, I can yes, see, we can here. see you, Tom. Yep. Okay, now I, okay, I put it on big view. Now I can see everybody. Sorry, I had a little trouble getting on. Where's Kelly? Hey, Sally. Sally. Sally, unmute yourself. Yes, Tom, I'm here. You did send it to me, I just saw it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Of course. So we got Nora. Uh, what are the other trustees? Why can't I see her back? Waiting for Kelly. Okay, it's Victor. And Natchez got a haircut. Looks good. Only one of them. I, I asked him to cut one, and they cut them all. <laughs> it's an old joke, but it's a good one. Good one. Let me pull the agenda up. Okay. okay. Give one minute, and we'll start up. Hi, Kelly. How are you doing? Okay, Kelly's here. I'm here. Yes. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Village of Marinick Board of Trustees work session for June 29th, 2020. May I please have a motion to open the meeting? So moved. Uh, uh, Nora and Dan seconded. Uh, Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start with MEMS. Uh, first of all, just let me start by saying uh, I appreciate that you uh, stayed on the line so long the last time. Uh, and I just want to tell you folks that you are kind of the unsung heroes of this COVID thing. And I know what you did. And this village and this community couldn't have gotten along without you folks. And we really appreciate it. And you're putting your life on the line every day in the most difficult situations. And, uh, you know, you're going straight to heaven as far as I'm concerned. I won't be there waiting for you. But when you get there, put it a good word for me. <laughs> All right. But thank um, you both. Um, just just before you get crew. started, um, I am, again, out of a super abundance of caution, I am just recusing. So I'm off with the mute and the camera for now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jerry. Yes, Mayor. How are you? So, uh, so let's just run through this. The, 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 they they want to put a deck. Yeah, they want to they want to fix retaining wall and put a patio and deck um, uh, at the at the facility. And Jason and his staff and I guess the the, the MEMS board um, received three quotes to do that. Um, obviously, um, I questioned, you know, uh, how we're going to pay for this, but Jason and Augie and Dan explained to me that there's a $10,000 improvement allotment uh, that's provided to them to make improvements at the building. Um, and so they didn't spend that allotment in 2018, and they didn't spend it in 2019. So what they're asking is that they combine those two allotments and uh, have this work done. Um, and the reason this work is being done is because it's a 24 hour facility, meaning that some members, uh, some employees of MEMS um, are there 24 hour period um, waiting and uh, basically um, on standby during these calls. And so when I asked Jason to explain it a little bit, he said that there are two different types of, of staff. There's a staff, staff members that come in and do a shift and then the staff members that that work a uh, 24 hour period. And this would provide them an area where they can, um, you know, they can um, get some fresh air, sit outside in a more comfortable uh, environment 
The retaining wall, uh, of course, because of their location, is extremely important as well. So to their credit, what they did was they went out and they got three quotes, of which the, the least expensive one and the one that they're asking um, us to approve is $18,190. Um, and that work is outlined in the, in the backup material. Um, and then, uh, Jason, if there's anything that I missed on that um, you know, description, just fill in. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's Kyle, it's Kyle Wilkie Glass on the line with you as well. And we understood that the board um, wanted to get to know us a little bit better too. And I have prepared some remarks if there is time and, um, and certainly work in deference to you as I know you have a packed agenda as always. We, we, we do, my friend. Can you do it in a few minutes? Absolutely. Okay, whip it on us. So, th so thank you for your kind words and you know, thank you for the invitation. Um, to come before you and the board this evening to give you a sense of what we do at Mamaroneck Emergency Medical Service, or MEMS as we call it, um, as well as an upcoming project that we had discussed with the village in the past. Um, as I had said, my name is Kyle Wilkie Glass, and I've been a member at MEMS for the last 20 years. And in that time, I spent the last six years in particular working closely at a strategic level with our chief, Jason Capalba, who I'm joined uh, by tonight. Um, in my work with Chief, with Chief Capalbo, I've really enjoyed working with the village through our board appointed liaison. And uh, we recognize that we're here tonight at really an introductory level um, because we certainly have not been uh, before the board in, in recent years. And we hope that we, um, we can you know, continue our good relationship and maintaining clear lines of communication uh, to this vital governing body. Um, for those of you who don't know, our agency was founded in 1973 by a very well-known village resident, John Quadrini. And I first met John when I was a teenager volunteering at NEMS, and his leadership, character, and integrity were really imprinted on me and our agency. And John was so proud of the fact that from inception, MEMS was a self-sustaining agency that used patient billing revenue through the Town of Meredith Ambulance District to pay our expenses and had an, a, a modest allowance from the village to help with routine repairs and capital renovations um, from time to time. And I vividly recall John, as many people may, telling me uh, about uh, his, his collection and use of plaid stamps to purchase our first ambulance. And while I don't think many village residents would recognize a plaid stamp today, we've carried, this, we've carried on with this tradition without fail every year to fundraise and purchase our own ambulances and equipment. Um, and we've come a long way from plaid stamps to using PayPal and GoFundMe. Um, and it's not an easy feat, but we do it because we believe in the work and we believe in our mission and we're committed to ensuring that an ambulance response is part of an essential service in the village of Mamaroneck. As you might imagine, um, and as you mentioned, our members have really redoubled their commitment over the last several months as we've prepared for and responded to COVID-19, and our response clearly still continues. Uh, we transported village residents who were potential or confirmed cases to the hospital and saw one of the ugliest sides of this global pandemic right here in our backyard. Our members continued to volunteer even in the face of unprecedented uncertainty and at great risk for their own health and the health of their families. We had 15 members who were infected with the virus through their work, and I'm pleased to report that each of them has made a full recovery. And we know that um, we all have family members, friends, and neighbors that were not as fortunate, which really only highlights the brutal, the brutal reality of the global pandemic. Um, even in difficult times like this, we partnered with village residents, Peggy Jackson and Ellen Hopton, to fundraise to provide our members and the members of the police department with more than 500 meals um, in recognition of their service. Um, and while we're optimistic that the infection rates in New York State continue to drop, we also know that the inevitable, the inevitable, the inevitable eventuality of a second wave is in front of us. And our members are more committed than ever to fighting this virus and fighting for the members of this community. And we know it'll be a long and a hard fight over the next 18 to 24 months. And we want you, our mayor and our village board to know that this is one that we are committed to with conviction. The village has always been generous with the time and resources and we thank you for that generosity. Um, over the last several years following the installation of our FEMA funded generator, we've looked to have a small addition to a portion of the property behind the building cleaned up and restored to use as a patio. 
Um, and we've included in this project the painting of a rusted safety railing around the generator, the building of a small retaining wall. I believe it's less than um, 18 or 24 inches to prevent soil erosion, the extension of the poured concrete pad, and some removal of debris uh, from a previous building project. And we really respectfully ask that the board consider the funding requests which includes funds that have been encumbered and held over from previous fiscal years so that we can execute the project. Uh, we know that there are so many funding priorities um, that are very important to the village. Um, and uh, we, we really ask that the mayor and the board consider um, this priority along the others that span likely every department and business unit within the village. Um, in closing, I feel compelled to note that the COVID-19 pandemic has caused uh, an undoubtedly a global disruption in economies that's felt, that's felt at every level, and even on our hyper-local level here in the village. And we would be remiss not to acknowledge the difficult position you're in as you balance priorities and make funding decisions. Um, the long history between MEMS and the village is an encouraging one, and one that we really feel we really feel honored to be a part of. And we remain so grateful for your support, your leadership, in your service to the village of Mamaroneck and remain at your disposal for any questions that you may have. And as I said, I'm joined by Chief Jason Capalvo as well. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Do you have anything? Um, Jason, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? Uh, no, I just wanted to kind of give a, just a little bit more detail on the patio itself. Um, prior to having the generator installed, we had a little bit more of a patio, uh, but when the generator was installed, they had to bring an excavator behind the building uh, and it basically destroyed everything that we had back there. So it's essentially a, a dirt pile uh, with a small uh, piece of asphalt, which is what we're trying to restore back to uh, pretty much what was there, uh, plus a little bit of a, about a one foot retaining wall to prevent it from you know, falling apart again. Uh, so it's nothing, nothing of any uh, major uh, change back there, but it's basically leveling the ground, uh, putting a small, about a foot or two foot retaining wall uh, and some either asphalt, uh, we have it specked out for pavers uh, and part of it, uh, that's pretty much the whole project. Okay. Uh, is anybody on the board have any questions for MEMS? I just had one question. In the, in the second estimate, the Liberty one, it said that there was um, installation of a four inch drain pipe, but I assume that that would be included in all the others, it just wasn't mentioned. That's right, it's, it's okay. included in all of them. Yeah. It just seems like a good idea, the drain pipe. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so I have a question, question yeah, no, Victor. Yeah. for Jason and, and then, then also for the, for the village manager. Uh, did, did, you, did you provide any kind of photos or diagram, anything so that we, you know, we don't, in, I haven't been in the building and I just have no idea. I, I've um, been outside, of course, and unfortunately I've never been in. But, but, I did uh, not, any, uh, any kind I did of any? Not, I, can, I can get that for you. Uh, I can get you a, a picture of what it, uh, currently is, and I can sketch for you essentially what uh, we want to put there. It's, it's very basic. Okay. It's essentially a square. Yeah. And then my other tech, I, I'm a little confused with with the funding. Is there funding? Because uh, we went through the budget, and I, you know, it was it was difficult. It was rushed, but uh, I don't. You know, I've seen the line, but it's not in front of me. You know, we, we didn't have the full backup. So wh where are we with the funding? Um, I'd have to refer to to Jerry. Um, Why don't Jerry answer that question? I'm sorry, Jerry. So let me pull it up. I, I can pull it up, but I had I had checked with Augie and Dan uh, prior to even speaking with Jason um, about the funding, and this was money that was set aside, right, Augie, from years prior. Look at it up right now. But yes. Where is it? Did we'll it come up with the number? When you, Jerry, when you say set aside, set aside in a separate account or just had not been expended and went back to the general fund? I know, I think it was set aside in, in, a, uh, in a separate account, not sent back to the general fund. I don't recall um, what the number was though. So we can clear, give us the information. I think I will pick it up there, okay. right? Because there's a lot today, but uh, I think now I understand at least where we are, and let's clarify the funding so, so we can. Yep. So, Jerry, can you have us uh, that at the regular at the at the meeting for next the thirteenth? Well, 
we, we have encumbered 10,427.10. I can send everybody a copy of the PO. Say, say it again, Augie. 10,427 has been encumbered. And, and Jason, was the intention that we use the balance of the, uh, the annual maintenance fund for the remainder of the project? Uh, so we had 10,000, I believe it was 2018, and we encumbered about the 10,000 or $9,000 of that into 2019. Uh, I submitted all this before May 31st. So this was uh, for the 2018-2019 uh, fiscal year, not, not uh, from this 2020 fiscal year starting June 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we do this? At, at the next work session, regular session, have you know, the funding sources and Jason, any uh, photographs? Sure. You, you can, and you know, and I, I would actually, I've never been upstairs in the building. I would actually like to come by and take a little tour. Yeah, I'd love to have you. I'll, I'll shoot you an email and we'll set something up. Okay. Great. Because I, you know, I was getting my oil changed the other day and I walked by it and I was like, I've never been up there. Definitely. I'll, I'll yeah. email you uh, right after this. Okay. So I'll have photos and um, funding lines available for the 13th. Can you please don't not until whenever you have it before the thirteenth? Oh, yeah, uh, that would yeah, be yeah, perfect. Yeah. Let's not wait for the Friday before the so we can. As soon you as you it. have it, no, nope, just, just Jason, you too. As soon as you can get us okay. a picture, please send. Sure, absolutely. Thank okay. you. All Thank right, you. so we're, we're moving forward on this. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Have a good night. Seriously, Thank, Thank you. you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This isn't going away. We all know that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, the next up, we're gonna do the town of Mamaroneck. I see Mr. Altieri hiding there. There's two of us hiding here. Put your camera on, Steve. I, I think I have my, oh, I don't. <laughs> don't tell me you don't have I thought, I thought you shut me out, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never. Hi, Steve, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm still learning this, this uh, yeah, yeah, format. Yeah. Uh, who's the other Steve Altieri? Is that Mr. Rob Wass? There he is. Hi, everybody. Rob oh, Wass. An engineer. Good evening. Steve, it's been a long time since you and I have been at a meeting together. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. So we're, we're talking about the Waverly Avenue Bridge here. Right. Where are we in the process, Steve? So where we are in the process is that uh, the engineers, HVA engineers, has uh, completed their preliminary uh, review of this. They have, um, uh, we had approved a, a seeker resolution, I think, two meetings ago. And we also had um, prepared some preliminary design work. I think there is, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there is some property acquisition we have to work through as well? Yes, Steve, uh, that's correct. Uh, just to clarify, so at this point, HVEA has finished their preliminary engineering report, which was transmitted to the New York State DOT back in May. Uh, at this point, we just recently, in the last week or two, received compass back, which they're working through. And uh, yes, to answer uh, Steve's point, there are two property acquisitions, both on the North, uh, northeastern and southwestern corners of the bridge property. Northeastern and southwestern. You, uh, Bob, can you explain why we need additional property? Certainly. Um, for its current location, when we started the process, we actually completed a topographic survey and it revealed that the current bridge span actually crosses on the private property at the southwest corner. Uh, so that's under current conditions. So with the proposed plan, since the bridge, uh, since the bridge is being widened and expanded to address the Army Corps' recommendations for the for the crossing, um, it does it does more more greatly accentuate that um, that encroachment onto the private property. When you say widen, do you mean widen the span underneath to allow water to flow, or widen the area where the traffic flows? Correct. So the current bridge has a span of 25 feet of abutment to abutment. The Army Corps' um, design study called for it to be widened up to 33 feet in width. So it is being uh, widened in, in, the, in, the, in the span crossing over the river, but also because we are incorporating sidewalks on the actual bridge deck, the, the actual travel deck itself will be wider just, just because of the sidewalks. It's the same uh, one lane each, each direction 
that's being brought to modern standards. And you phased uh, you type two it in secret, correct? Because it's a replacement. Yep. yep. I, I have a question about that um, because it's not exactly a, a replacement. The abutments are changing, and also because there's a second action, which is acquiring easement. We had the same situation on the Hillside Avenue Bridge, and initially it was type two, but then it was. So I, 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 I'm not, I don't know if it's, I, I wouldn't have said it was a type two action because it's not a kind. It has an additional component of acquiring easements. Rob, you want to take a crack at that? Sure. Actually, I didn't um, see it that way with us, so. Yeah, and um, and I know that, that our town attorney also had reviewed the classification. Um, I could understand that there's a little bit of a, uh, um, parallel to the Hillside Avenue Bridge, I believe one of the distinguishing factors is that Hillside Bridge was also considered a historic structure uh, by the SHPO office. Uh, this bridge in the Army Corps study was reviewed for historical significance. Nothing was determined. I believe, and again, I'm not an attorney, so I'm not going to try to be one here, <laughs> um, but I believe that the secret classification has some, um, some clarifications in the commentary that says that um, the bridge doesn't have to be within the same exact footprint, but obviously that's more of a, um, a legal attorney's, um, I guess, point to argue. I, I'm just a basic seeker. It's not exactly, a, it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's more than one action. It's a replacement in kind, maybe, and it's acquiring easements. And that just generally makes it a type one action that has to be evaluated. So, Probably unlisted, maybe. Um, it's not unlisted. I mean, I would say it's an unlisted action, and I considering and it's a, it's and whether or not the Hillside Avenue Bridge was an historic bridge, if it had been a type two action, no further research would have had to have been done. But because of the easements, it was an unlisted action. So I don't know. I just I, considering all of the um, conversation that I've had in the neighborhood about the bridge, which seemed to be environmental impacts, it seems like it that having it be an unlisted action would serve to address. Serve, to serve as a forum to address the neighbor's concerns. I, I don't think that, uh, nor I don't think the neighbor's concerns have to do with the structural, the construction of the bridge itself. Um, I mean, we're meeting an Army Corps requirement, which we really don't have any choice on. And the acquisition of the property is really trying to make up for an issue that has existed. And probably when that bridge was originally constructed, no one really considered that it was crossing a piece of private property. Uh, for all practical purposes, it really is a replacement of the bridge. The issues that I think that are being raised by the neighborhood really address the issue of traffic flow more than anything else. And as I think the town has said every time we've discussed the Waverly Avenue bridges, anything that you want to raise with respect to traffic flow that is purely the discretion of the village, of the, the village and the town you know, would not attempt to interfere or involve itself in that other than if you needed assistance. Um, you know, we're just worried about getting the bridge replaced. Um, I, I, I understand, but, I'm, and, but, I, but I think that when you do a, when you do an, a seeker review, you, d you deal with environmental impacts and traffic is an environmental impact. So I guess, what I, I guess whether we call it a type two or an unlisted action, those, still, those same kinds of things, those questions are coming up and so we all need to address them, whatever the forum, whatever the forum is. Here's the thing, they've already voted and made a type two action and they've already done their secret. Uh, so, and, and that's on them. And you know, that's not for us to challenge their secret. It's, you know, if someone else wants to do that, someone else does that. Uh, I think what's up to us is to decide how to best use the bridge and how to best, uh, you know, what is, our responsibility uh, to affect the traffic in the area and the safety in the area. Uh, yes. Yeah, Victor. Yes, uh, probably this ties the two issues, uh, which is what are what what village of Mamaroneck permits would be required? What is uh, required? My understanding that the village of Mamaroneck would be issuing a highway permit for work within the right of way. Uh, most likely based upon village code and erosion and sediment control permit. Okay. Um, and it's possible that 
there also may be a county permit for work within the within the channel itself. Would this go to uh, the Harbor Coastal Commission, Bob? This action, this this Bob, Bob this Solzino. project. Bob Solzino. Sorry, you muted, Bob. You're muted. Sorry, I was muted. Um, because that's where it will become could become relevant. Yeah, I mean, if if there are permits that I mean, I have to look at the uh, you know look at the code and look at the permits that are required and so forth. But if there are permits are, that are required that HCZMC that require consistency before they can be granted, yeah, I would have to. Uh, I'm think, not familiar enough with what the permits are in order to, to make that call, but Bob, Bob I think I think you need a consistency determination from the Harbor to Coastal Zone and a structures permit uh, and a wetlands permit. All, th all three are required by anybody in the world. I don't know enough about the project to comment yet. Sorry. All right, but that 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 still doesn't bring us back to the secret. I mean, it's their secret. No, I understand, but that's just answering the question that was no, raised. I understand. I didn't, no, we, no, it it does it does. That's why I was getting at, yes. which is it'll go to our boards, and our boards are going to jump on it uh, because they're probably going to say what wasn't even listed. So it's better for us. Although but, although the town, I'm going to finish. Let me finish. The town of Mamarnik is the one, is yes. the lead agency. They're the ones who type it. Correct. Yes. We we can still ask the questions, and that's what we're doing now. And maybe we can ask it officially. So then, then the answer comes officially when it gets to our land use boards. The answer will be will be not just this discussion here, but it will be more of a formal discussion with a list of the permits uh, from Bob and a description of of the project. So I, I think the. Okay. Clarifying this at the outset will help us navigate the, further. The horse is out of the barn. They have already typed it and voted on it and approved it. Well, if, if, if I may, if they, if the town determined it to be a type two action, they didn't do seeker at all. They said, oh, it was exempt from seeker. Therefore, if there are permits that are required from the village, that would not also be covered by, you know, within the type two list, then it would have to be treated as an unlisted action and seeker would have to be done in the village. Um, so again, if I knew more specifics about the project, I could give you more information, but this is the first time it's ever been raised in my presence, so. Okay, I, before we get into a legal fight with the town, maybe Bob, you could talk to Bill Maker. Sure. Yep. I'll, I'll find out. Do you know where we are? Mayor, if I may, it really is not a legal fight. This happens all the time with municipalities. It's just about talking. And because we are a permitting authority, it, and, and to facilitate their way to the uh, our own boards and then precisely to pick up our boards, maybe getting in more conflicting issues with the board, if we if we do this early on, we can facilitate the process. So I know it's not going to be easy because our boards are very active. They're going to be asking a lot. So actually, let's you think? let's be let's be open on that. So the project happens in the village. That that's that that's the issue. It, it's that's the jurisdictional problem. But but we'll collaborate. That that's it, it gets worked out all the time, right, Bob? But we have to put, we'll, we'll do our best to collaborate right, from from the get go. When do we have to, when does it have to be referred to boards? Has there been an application made to the village yet? Steve? Well, we've been, we've been actually, you know, we've had the, 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 the village informed on each step as we've gone along. And Rob, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe when we've had the meetings with HVAE, the village has been there, correct? That's correct. Uh, both Dan Sarnoff and at the time the village engineer were both part of all of our progress meetings to date. Um, this is a point of clarity uh, at this point. This is still at the permitting level with the New York State DOT. So at this point, no local permits have been submitted. Uh, I believe the project uh, schedule would, would call for uh, detailed design report approval to be given from DOT before any sort of local permit applications are made. So that's still several months away. And has, has DOT done anything about Seeker? What have they done? Mm -hmm. Uh, to date, nothing. I don't believe there was any comment or um, 
a response received from them with, with regards to secret. Yeah, because we have to see the times may have run on this. I mean, we didn't anticipate this was going to be this kind of an issue. I have to be honest. What would what, you say, Steve? I said I'd, I'd, I'd have to, ha, Bob needs to talk to Bill because I know there's a certain amount of time that lapses after the resolution of the, te, of the uh, town board on the secret designation. So we'd have to see where that all fits and then how we fit in these ap applications for these other permits. Which we'll, you know, we'll work with Bob and, and, and Jerry on. Did your, did your, uh, in, did the, the uh, consultant uh, speak to you about any of these other permits? Um, I believe that permitting was discussed as part of the initial design uh, kickoff. Um, I, I, I believe, and again, it's my understanding that all the permits may be department issued permits for the village, but obviously, you know, our, our subsequent discussion that we're having now will, you know, have to confirm those uh, assumptions. All right, so I guess we have, we have to wait to see where we are. Is that basically where we are? All right. But obviously it might make sense for Bob and Bill to talk and maybe outline what the permits are gonna be needed and what boards need to be involved. Um, I think you're getting a heads up that there could be some thorny issues here. I think we have to decide what those issues are though. I mean, I yep. think, you know, we, we've got, <clears throat> we, we've had to address the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, we've had to address the issue of the, the structure itself. We have, we have, to, and there's this property acquisition issue and we have limited ourselves solely to those issues and, um, you know, have not attempted to address any of those other issues. So we don't see them as ours. You know, I just, would remind everybody that we do have a $1.7 million grant that's involved in this project so that we want to make sure that we don't do anything to jeopardize that grant. And um, who is the grant from? Whatever the bridge, whatever the village wants to take on in terms of traffic flow and the like, I, we get it. And, and uh, my conversations with the village they have been that if for some reason the village <clears throat> decides to change its mind as to what this bridge will function as, then we just need to know so that we don't end up expending a lot of funds um, in advance of that, only to learn that maybe you have a different different outlook or a different vision. You know, I, I think you have, uh, you, you're raising a valid point. And I think, you know, I, I had conversation with a resident who's an active member of that community today that uh, the board saw. Uh, and the community is gonna come on the 13th uh, to talk about their concerns. So, you know, maybe I think what the board needs to do, our board, is first listen to the residents' concerns. And then after, perhaps we need to get a, a traffic consultant in and have the traffic consultant talk to us about, you know, which kind of bridge we need there and how it's going to be, uh, you know, and, and if there is a way to uh, keep traffic out of that community and also while doing so allow uh, emergency services to uh, access and have uh, the ability to keep people safe. Victor? Hey, I think what you really need to keep this separate because as, as Steve just said, uh, you know, this is a big project, an important project, a lot of money. And I think the village already gave the okay to do the, to, to, I mean, we gave our, our, I think it was a resolution way back, maybe last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. When, we, when, they, when they brought it to us and we said, let's move forward. So I think they really have to keep it a separate issue, kept separate issue of how the, how the, the one thing is how the, the, the bridge has been proposed now has to go through some local permitting and then deal with that bridge as design so that it, it, it satisfies the permits. Now, moving aside, then we can have a, a separate conversation with the residents, which is what you're referring to, and engage our consultant to see how certain traffic patterns, uh, some... Uh, you know, uh, measures to minimize when whatever uh, we, uh, in consultation with the residents, uh, can 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 uh, will come up to what what is the best optimal use of of that bridge. But that should not affect now uh, the abutments, the um, easement uh, acquisitions. If 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 we if we no, it should combine the two things. It'll be it'll be it'll it'll, it'll get off off the rails. No, but what, what I'm saying is, I know that when uh, this goes to HCZMC, 
there's going to be questions about traffic patterns and it's going to be the community is going to be there talking you can shake your head but people are going to come and people no, no. are going to ask these questions uh, it goes for consistency mm -hmm. they i know i know how hcmc works but i also know, there, I know there will be people there asking these questions no they're coming to they'll come to us so on next so week we can, we can work on two tracks correct I, I did reach out to our traffic consultant last week to make him aware of this is something that may we may ask him to look at uh, yeah. thanks Dan. Him. that's great he uh he ha he's probably he's looked at part of washingtonville already so he should be familiar uh -huh. with it yeah and you're talking about Camo uh, what's his name Harmony? yeah yeah. yeah, I spoke to him last uh, Thursday or Friday. Matt Camodi. Yeah, he was part of the most recent walking safety assessment. So he does know the area and the traffic concerns generally in the area. So it'd be great to get him on board sooner rather than later. So we'll, we'll, we'll have Bill and Bob talk and we'll listen to the residents at the next meeting. Yeah. Uh, what about the sewer truck? You wanna talk about the sewer truck now that we have these guys here? Yeah, sure. Easy, that one's easy. Mm -hmm. That's easy. I hope so. <laughs> so, so um, Mayor, um, as everyone um, on the Zoom knows, the um, uh, the sewer truck was purchased as a shared services uh, in the hopes of um, obtaining some grant money uh, because there was a big push for shared services. But in addition to that, we had a lot of operational things that we needed to discuss. And one of the things that that came to light was that operating a complicated piece of equipment like that should not be sh something that's shared. Um, it should be something that trained staff would do. And so um, we felt it was best if the town was willing to have their staff uh, operate the truck and come into the village and we would pay them uh, a set reimbursement fee um, to be able to be adjusted, of course, year to year. Um, and the fee and the um, conversation that we had with Steve and, and with uh, Mr. Wasp was that um, a fee of $122 an hour uh, would be um, um, would be collected by the town from the village for every hour that their employees and the um, the operation of the truck perform services within the village limits. And so that's really the whole um, kit and caboodle of it. It really is the whole thing. I did share with the board, Steve and Rob, the breakdown of what you provided where it shows the salaries and, and uh, fringe, and then the operational costs, um, including the regular and routine maintenance on the vehicle that's expected, um, and breaking that down per hour. That works out best for us. It's the, in my opinion, it's the fairest uh, way for us to reimburse the town when the employees come to the village. The other thing that's probably that Jerry and I talked about is that once um, the way the New York State Shared Services Grant Program works is once we have this up and operating, we can actually apply for a grant yeah. uh, to help offset the uh, the capital expenditure for the purchase and and uh, retrofitting of the truck to be a sewer television truck. But the way the program works, you have to be up and running first and then submit the Shared Services Grant. Just a, a quick question about just to go back to the last thing. Where was that uh, grant coming from to build the bridge? The grant's coming from what's called New York Bridge. Uh, the New York Bridge, NY Bridge is the name of the program. Rob filed the application. It's got to be what, almost a year and a half ago? Two years uh, yes. ago? Um, the application was filed in fall of 2018. It's the New York mm -hmm. State. It was a 20, uh, 2018 Bridge New York Award. Okay, so it's from New York State. We got an award of one point seven seven five million dollars. So, it's a very nice chunk of money to go towards this project. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, and the, does anybody else have any questions about the sewer truck? It sounds like a good deal. Yeah, it's a, this is a great shared service between the two communities. It really would be nice if we could get money back from if, if if something would come back from the state. Yeah. Now and again, that would be nice. Yeah, it's hard for municipalities to put these things together, but I'm really happy that uh, we were able to do so. Do we, do we put it on for Monday or? 13th. Yeah, let's put it on for the 13th. 13th. A week from now, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming, Tom and Thank you for having us. Thank you for uh, coming. Have a great meeting, and we'll talk to you all soon.
Thank you, Steve. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye, bye, Bob. Hey, all. I I've got a bad internet connection. I can I, your um, audio is going in and out, so I'm going to log out and then come back in. Okay. Okay. I'll be right back. I'm just going to wipe my face. Okay. Uh, wait for Kelly to log back in. There she is. I'm back. I'm back. Better? Is it better? I better? hope so. I hope so. We'll see. Not too bad. All right. The next item we're going to talk about is the tree committee because there's tree people waiting online here, right? Um, I think Beverly's here. What? Beverly, Sh Gail Culler's here. Gail's here. Gail's here. I don't see her on a list. Attendee. She's, She's on attendees. Oh, okay. Somebody wanna can she get promoted or something? Oh, Cliff, are you promoting her? She's on the big screen. She just has to unmute. Okay, Gail, unmute your uh, mic when you get a chance. Done and I'm gonna start video. All right. Hey, Again. guys. Nice Again. to see everybody. Nice to be seen. Yeah. OK. Uh, where are we now, Nora, with the tree? We need Christy, too. I'm here. Yeah, Christy's there. Okay. So we have the version 19, right? Yeah. Does everybody have ver Christy? Yep. Christy, can you share, share the screen, or is that too hard? Oh, god. Uh, I actually cannot. I don't think because I use a remote desktop. If um, you can enable and I'm not me in my remote desktop to do this. So if you could give me co host privileges, I can do a share screen. Oh, actually, I can do it now. Hang on. It'll just mm -hmm. take me a moment to bring it up. Sorry, guys. So do we need to bring up the law? I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, we're on page. Does everybody have it in front of them? Instead, we're on page 18. 13. We got through. We st we're at section seven, correct, Kristen? <coughs> yes. Yeah. So it's starting with, I think, no, technically it's section six. Three, four, uh, section 342 79 planning board action, I believe, is where we left off. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So we just need to, and so these are the comments. The, the comment was our the, the permit of $25 was too low. It should go up to 50. I think. Well, are you comfortable with the comment at 342-79 about as early as reasonably possible in the review process, the planning board may at, at its discretion refer the applicant's tree preservation plan to the tree committee for review and comment? Yeah, I thought we did that last time. Did we do that last time? I thought I think we got I thought we got to, yeah. Anyway. It's I don't know if that was in version eighteen, but it's now in version nineteen, 19. and we're fine. We're fine with that, taking out must and putting in may at its discretion. Okay, that's fine. Just that way the planning board won't run into any um, time deadlines that they can't ac accommodate with the tree committee. Okay. Uh, by the way, Bev is present also, although we can't see her. I don't know if somebody needs to uh, sign her in, but she just texted me that she's present. I think she's watching on LMC TV. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so she has, to, she has to log on to Zoom if she wants to. She's got to log on to Zoom and then we can see her. Okay, I sent her a link. She says she's there too. I don't know. Mm. Okay, anyway. So I guess the next question is, do we up the fee from 25 to 50 or do we leave it at 25? The, power the, the point being that the fee was simply, wasn't supposed to be onerous. We just want people to apply for these permits. We agree with that sentiment, that thinking that it should not be onerous. It's really not about making money for it. It's just about you know having a process in place and we are fine with $25. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody? Just the board. I mean, because I guess we should also have said, once we finish these two pages, then Christy and Bob are going to finish all of the revisions and hopefully have a clean version for us for two weeks from yeah. now. So this is the point for for the board to try and 
make as many comments as possible. So we have fewer in two weeks. Um, and then section B, 348.11, where we're deleting a maximum extent practical because that means literally without any without any um, cause for expense. No matter what happens, if you can do it, you have to do it. Is that section eight that you're referring to, Nora? Eight, section eight, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we had, we have um, also deleted that previously. Yeah, and I don't that's been deleted in version 20. That's section three, 342.16. I'm sorry, I don't have a section 20. What was deleted in, in so, version 20? No, we sorry. So, Sorry, Nora, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, I have made, so so the board had previously gone through this version at a prior meeting on May 26th, and so that as far as they had gone, I had made those edits into a version 20. That has not been shared with the board yet. Once we finish with these edits on version 19, um, those will go into version 20. So all I was saying is that I've already made that edit to version 20 about okay. removing maximum extent. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the, the comment is section nine, three, A348.12, um, we are adding the requirement that the planning board needs to, um, cre to create a tree preservation plan with a subdivision. And that that, that, that requirement is um, Go through that again, Nora. So, that, so the, the planning board has to create a tree preservation plan as part of the subdivision approval. And that tree preservation plan um, is, has to be followed um, in order for the applicant to receive a certificate of occupancy. So they get their subdivision plan, but the tree preservation plan is held, is, is in, in, in full function um, until they get their certificate of occupancy. So if they don't comply with it, they can't get a certificate of occupancy. Do you, should you use the word until, or this, this may uh, carry after the, the project, so, right? I think well, there's a problem with regulating once someone moves into the property. Um, that gets then taken over by removal of trees on private property. Right. So we really can only, um, I guess, regulate it up until the certificate of occupancy is granted. My question is, if it's the same owner, let's say the preservation plan is one year, two years, would it, would it, would it be? Well, so I think it wouldn't be. So the tree preservation plan is one of the requirements of site plan approval. Um, and then they have to, they cannot get a certificate of occupancy if they haven't complied with their tree preservation plan. It's one of the, one of the requirements or one of the, um, I guess, you know, those resolutions that are often on the site plan approval. And then once they've gotten their certificate of occupancy, then the tree law kicks in. And okay, they, but okay. they would have this, it would obviously, somebody who, somebody who had gone through this process or the subsequent owner would have, their file would reflect that they have this subdivision plan and this um, tree preservation plan. Okay. It's just to make sure that they comply with it. Um, and if they don't comply with it, they can't get a certificate of occupancy. And those are the last few changes. And then we had also asked the board to discuss the bond requirement. And I did a little research and the bond requirement seems to have been a holdover from the very first draft and it we don't no one it may have been from scarsdale but um the sense was the bond requirement was onerous and going to be hard to administer so um i don't know if the tree committee weighed in they were i'm not they weren't they were asked to weigh in individually not as a committee but just as individual members i'm sorry where exactly what it's, what item is it it's on page um page nine nine what item the yeah. end it's c wait that's not on page nine so that's yeah that's page, bottom of page eight Is it i have it on 
Oh, wait, hold on. Let me it's hold middle on. of page so 10. Right? Middle of page 10. Right, it's middle of page 10. Middle of page 10 on version 19. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, that's correct. Page small, small, letter C. small letter C. Look for that. You'll see it. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm not in favor of the bond. What the rest do you think about it? I've always been critical of the bond. Do we have any idea how much a bond would cost? Did anyone learn that? Um, no, I, I, we we asked, and then I think that the consensus from the consent, Christy and I asked and didn't get an answer, and both think that it's really probably too onerous, and it's yeah. not. It could be a showstopper in stopping the law from getting passed. We don't want to do that. Uh, we we want to move this forward, and it it seems to me that it. I wish Bev could weigh in on this. Um, and Bev, if you're listening, you could text me, and I can share what your text is. Um, uh, I do have an email from her, actually. Okay, yeah, Bev. Bev and I agreed. Drop the bond. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what my understanding was that she was okay with the bond yes. um, being deleted as well. I'm, I'm okay as well. Thank you for all this work. Yeah. Very she, welcome. She said, my personal thought is that we would have a very good law even without requiring the bond. Yeah, I, I think the bond is a little, little, little much. I mean, I think if, if, if going down, if down the road, we find we have a problem, we could always revisit it, but I, I think we should remove it now. We're in agreement. Okay, we'll remove the bond. And then that's, that's truly it, unless Nora, you have anything else. No, I think, I mean, I think, I think that's it. I think if we're going to, I think the, the goal would be is to have a, a good draft, a clean draft in two weeks and maybe schedule it for a public hearing, maybe in September. Um, and, you know, then go to the effort of getting in touch. We have a list of maybe 35 people who made comments and make sure since it's been a long time, those people actually are aware of that there's going to be a public hearing in September or whenever we're going to do it. So can I say one thing? Mm -hmm. um, I have no problem uh, doing the work for the tree law and all of that stuff after it's passed. Uh -huh. But um, if it helps with um, uh, Glenn's suggestion where it's village manager or his, or his designee, mm -hmm. that, that I don't think there's a problem in the, in the if we add that to the law. I think that's in version. I think, yeah, I think we I think we decided to add that. Yeah. But if we didn't we if we didn't we certainly should. Yeah, I looked at it, I just looked quickly. Uh Christy had a couple of spots and it didn't say that. So if we can be if it's throughout the whole thing then that's fine. I'll have to double check. I know we specifically added it to certain spots, so I'd have we to did. see. It. We added it. I think you and I might have added it to certain spots, but if it's in other areas, it's not a big deal. I mean, we happen to have a village manager who's very qualified and enjoys doing this, but we might not always. But, and I so. would hope to have someone in the public works department someday qualified as much as I am, uh -huh. that would be, or in the parks department, and that would be, you know, something that we strive for, so. All right, Jerry, I'll, I'll take a look and add it. Yeah, I just wanted to run that by while everyone was on, you know, Thank on the you. Screen. What about the appeals process, though? So for instance, any applicant who has been denied tree removal permit may appeal to the village manager. Yeah. So when, I, when I deny their when I deny their application with when I deny their permit, then I'm the one who, who decides on the appeal. I, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Okay. No, but I mean, you're, <laughs> you're designee. You're not gonna work that way. <laughs> it was, right. I know. So I, I knew Bob would. Um it it so so Mr. Sarnoff and I are the ones who jump back and forth when we have those issues. So it'd be, it would be Dan or it'd be me. Um, okay. Okay. It, okay. Then we'll add it. We'll add it there. We do that with, with labor issues. Not a special all the time. hearing in a mayor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's see what we get back. If we put it through the grinder and it comes back. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Folks.
Beverly, if you're thank watching. You. Thank you, everybody. Much. You're welcome. Thanks, Gil. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Uh, Good night. Thank you, Gil. You're very welcome. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Uh, review of public safety capital budget requests. I see the chief is on. Uh -huh. Yeah, chief is on. Somebody want to promote the chief? It's a super chief. Where we're promoting to. <laughs> but somebody got that. <laughs> hey, Pete, unmute yourself. Good man. Thank you. Hi, Pete. Good evening, all. Good evening. Hi, chief. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do I start? Do you guys start? Why don't you start, Pete? Okay. So there were a couple of things in the uh, capital budget requests that I filled out several months ago that uh, we wanted to go over. Um, the first one being the chief's car. Um, now, Manager Barbario had indicated to me that he didn't believe that the number that we originally put forward was realistic, and he asked me to get a new number That's uh, on the chief's car. And Sounds thank like you, good, doesn't it? It, it like does. No, and, and, and actually, it's a good thing that you did because I did a little bit of research. And um, hold on, I want to make sure I pull it up. Let me pull it up. Okay, so. Um, I had originally indicated that uh, the cost for replacement for a new, uh, new fire chief's car would be $60,000. Um, based on uh, new information that I got today, we're actually probably looking at currently $65,000. Um, however, um, there, there's um, a little bit of a uh, adjustment on that as well. So, um, TCD, which is a local company that we deal with and that gets us the cars through the New York State bid process, um, has one car left in the 2020 line. We would need to commit to that almost immediately. And I realize we can't do that tonight, but um, because it's the last one, apparently, that, that's available just about anywhere. And based on that, the price um, uh, would probably be right about at about $65,000. There was a slight increase in the vehicle cost um, versus the one that was bought um, back uh, several years ago in uh, 2017. Also, there's been some lighting technology changes and uh, that have increased the price on lighting, lighting for the vehicle. And the third thing is that there's a... Um, uh, I, I know you're all very aware that uh, there's been a big push um, in the fire service regarding cancer and uh, the new car would be supplied with a specialized vented cabinet to place uh, the fire chief's turnout gear in so mm -hmm. he wasn't exposed all the time to the carcinogens that would be off gassing from his turnout gear. Wow. Uh, those things altogether increase the price um, up to about 60, up, up to the $65,000 number. Now, the next issue with it is this, and that is that the, uh, if we don't grab this last vehicle, we're looking at uh, waiting for the 2021 version of the car. And that won't be available until January. And, uh, Absolute minimum increase is thirty is three thousand, uh, more than likely actually five thousand. So we would actually be saving a little bit of money if we were if we moved quickly. Um, so, Chief, Chief I'll, I'll go. The sheet is at my table, but what's the what is this one? Would which truck would this replace? What the year and the mileage of the truck that it would replace? Okay, so. Um, the car that would be being replaced um, is the 2008 Chevy, and uh, the mileage is 124,000, I believe. I'm not 100% sure that that's accurate, but it's pretty close. Okay. Um, that vehicle's actually been in at least one accident, 
that had it out of service for a while. Um, actually, right now, having major engine work done because it was, uh, it, it turned out it, there, there was an electrical problem and they found an engine problem as well. Um, so the, the vehicle is definitely uh, in need of replacement. And what about the radios, the way we discussed the radios? Be able to okay, so um, the radios, several of the radios in that car are actually new. Um, and the county is switching the radio system. So the uh, one of the other radios would end up being replaced when the county switches part of their radio system over. Um, so we would initially use, uh, I believe, three out of the four radios that are in the truck or possibly the fourth, although I would have to talk to my radio guy to be sure about that, uh, of the existing radios. So there would not be, I don't believe, and I, I have to double check this because I'm not the radio guy. Uh, I don't believe that we have to replace um, the majority of the radios uh, when we do this. We should be able to transfer um, most or all of them. And what is a, what is a public safety warning package? Is that sirens and things that could be switched over or not really? No, that, that's very difficult to switch over. Okay. Um, you're talking uh, a lot of pulling wires and mm -hmm. um, you're talking stuff that's at this point um, over 10 years old. Uh, the technology has, has passed the, uh, the existing equipment by. Right. I think it's safe to say that you know, we're trying to get you know, 10 to 12 years of frontline service and you know these vehicles over the course of that time are going to respond to thousands of incidents. Yes. Yeah. So they are somewhat of a workhorse. Would you say then a what? Somewhat of a workhorse. Can I ask a question on the radios? How much is that, Chief? Uh, I do not have the number on the radios. Um, I would have to uh, it not, get it. But it was not big, right? It, we're talking about fifteen, twenty thousand. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, it's big. It's big, but I mean, compared to right. Um, so again, some of the radios would be transferred over. Um, one of them is going to eventually be replaced by the county anyway. Okay. So there wouldn't be, it wouldn't make any sense to replace that one. Um, I, I don't have the radio code in front of me um, because my assistant chief handles the radios and he's actually been handling them long before he was chief and he did not give me those numbers. And I'm sorry about that. That's fine, chief. I think the radios are really central. I know. And he, uh, chief Costa already made, made, made the pitch and has explained it. So we can pick that up. Later, I, my my two questions are are first, if I look at if I look at the capital uh, plan, it has actually the fire ch the, the chief's car at sixty five rated as the number one priority, and then I have the the engine forty, uh, which is eight 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 hundred and fifty plus the auxiliary equipment we discussed it last time. It's probably going to be around um, nine nine hundred, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. That's priority number two. And kind of the radio. Uh, that, that was that's my personal bias. Let's be perfectly honest here. That's perfectly well, right. Okay, so it, it is my understanding that uh, probably both are priorities number ones, including the radios. Uh, I mean, because they don't have to. Okay, or well, anyway, you tell me. No, I I would agree with that. It, it was very difficult for me to um, to decide which one should be put forward. Obviously, when I put it forward, uh, I was thinking about the fact that. Um, I am the fire chief and I would be using okay. the car. I, I admit that. Okay. Uh, but okay. the, the engine is absolutely on the top of the list because of its, it, its utility to the community. But, but chief, I don't worry. I don't want to be, uh, it was not a uh, um, tricky question or anything because actually uh, we, we, what we, we need, we didn't now, after and I'll, and I'll move into how, what we can really finance. It is really what are, what are the priority needs for, for 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 safety, health and safety. That's really what we're doing. How we started this process. So so on on that basis, 
then, then, then uh, the engine, as was presented, seems to be one, the radios, and, and, and the chief scar has been, has been, in a way, added to that list, right? So, yes, so that, that then, then uh, I have one question on, on that, that was left from last time, because I promised uh, a member of the uh, budget committee that I would ask if she, if she was not uh, present, and I don't see her present. Uh, this is a question from Ellen Hopman. And she was asking, uh, trying to compare uh, the calls that SCAR still receives, the city of Rye, and comparing it to us, we're a little less, uh, and th those cities are a little larger. And then if you can, then the other element is, is, is population. How, how, how and we, we already discussed the safety rating. So anything yes. else you want to add to that? I think population was not part of her equation, which is a big thing. So that's the partial answer I had for her, but since we have you here, what, what else? What else? Uh, okay, so the biggest difference between um, those two communities that you mentioned, you said, I believe, Scarsdale and Rye? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The biggest difference is that those are departments that have paid personnel. Right. Okay. That's the biggest difference. We, um, we are 100% volunteer here in the village. We have been for 136 years, I believe it is now. Uh, we're very proud of that fact. Um, and let's be honest, it saves a lot of money uh, because salaries are for any, any department anywhere is going to be the biggest, uh, the biggest expense. Um, so that is certainly, you know, the, the biggest difference as far as responses, I don't know what the responses are for for Rye or Scarsdale. Um, I've never researched that, to be honest with you. Um, uh, the last year I have records for, we responded to over 800 alarms um, for the year, which um, is an average of over two a day. And uh, um, we don't do EMS. I don't know if Rye or Scarsdale does. Uh, if they do do EMS response, their numbers are going to be far above ours, without any question. Thank you. And also, even with us being all volunteer, I know in the past week, uh, our department has responded to a fire in Rye. Right. Uh, that is correct. We were we were requested to assist uh, the Rye Fire Department uh, about five days ago, four or five days ago, um, and that's not unusual. Um, it's 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 the mutual aid system. A community needs help, we help them. We need help, they help us, and it, it truly is mutual. Um, you know, if if I need if I need more apparatus, more personnel, I call and I get it. Chef, Chief, the next thing is if we, uh, based upon the, the, the bonding and, and the financing, if we, we can, if we get the information from, from uh, Jerry and, 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 and Augie on, on where we are with, with, um, with that. Uh, I think that the, the, if, if the big purchase is done this year, it will be paid next year. Can you clarify all this? And then what I suggest is that we, 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 put with the, we make a dec decision today and to put it on for the for the um, for the uh, next meeting in July, but first, clear. Let's clear. We can really afford it. What, what are you talking about putting on the fire truck? Yeah, but let's see if we can afford it, or we or, or how how would we pay for it? more than because afford it? It's a matter of priorities versus when we we paid in our capital, but and we'll have to make those decisions. But but at least we have to identify which 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 elements, which material, which uh, you know capital. Issues are really central that, that we that we can put them on, but so but without the numbers on on projections, so uh, I think we, we we can't make that decision. Augie, uh, so, so you, you know what they, they what they're talking about, right? They want a projection of what the capital cost is going to be if we bond it. The amortization of the yeah. fire truck. Yeah, you just can you work that out? Not right now, but you know for the next uh, meeting, and also just. If you know off the top of your head, what, what, 
What's it, what's the going rate for uh, municipal bonds? Municipal bonds are right under two percent. Um, a bond anticipation note, which is a five-year note, is less than one. Okay, good to know. All right. All right, Pete. Uh, as uh, the liaison to the fire department has explained, we're going to try to address it at the July 13th meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for all you do and all the men and women of your department have been doing through this crisis and every day. Uh, no, th thank you for giving me the time to talk tonight. Anytime, Pete. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Pete. Okay. Good night. Okay. Procurement authorities. We're moving along uh, tonight. Okay, uh, Bob, you're muted. <clears throat> Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, so you gave us an opinion. Uh, there was feedback from mm -hmm. NICOM, and you, you sent us a memo addressing the feedback from NICOM. That's right. So would you, do you want to just uh, kind of give us a short version of all that? Um, the short, the really short version is, in my view, we are back to what does a delegation of administrative and executive authority need? And there's no real guidance um, in the law for that. Um, I did try uh, today to obtain the, uh, if, you, if you remember from my memo, the village manager form of the government, form of government in the village was adopted pursuant to Article 15A of the village law, which was repealed in 1972. So all the existing online resources that we've come to rely on don't have that anymore. It's not available. So I contacted the Department of State and I contacted the State Library today in an attempt to find it. I mean, I suspect that the language of the village code was simply adopted as uh, to use the Latin in hake verba from, uh, from state law. But I don't know that to be true. So I asked them for a copy. Uh, the, I didn't hear back from the Department of State, but the State Library said they have it and they could send it to me if I sent them $10. And uh, they haven't responded yet. I haven't gotten it yet. So, uh, but I don't know. I don't think that's a major issue. I don't think that's gonna change things in terms of what the interpretation is here. Okay. Member on the board, want to address this? So if I understand you correctly, Bob, what you're saying is that um, there's no clear guidance. It's a matter of interpretation. Uh, so does that mean that the village, that the board is free to make us its own determination as what, how would they want to interpret it? Well, there's a, there's a statute, there's a local, there's a code that you, you can't, um, you have to follow, but yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't decide an apple is an orange, but you can decide whether it's a Macintosh or a uh, Golden Delicious. I understand that you can't change the code. I wasn't suggesting that, right. but the code, the code, Basically, yeah. if I'm hearing you correctly, you're telling me that there's no clear guidance and it's a little muddied. Is that well, a fair statement? No, it's not quite a fair statement. The guidance is the English language. You know, what's the common understanding of administrative and executive in the context of a, uh, a local law that says all administrative and executive power, including the power to hire and fire, is delegated to the village manager. Given that, does that include purchasing? Um, I, what I've said to you is, in my view, it does. Um, you know, that's it, it's you. You can make whatever decision you like. At that point, you can tell me I'm wrong. Uh, if someone sued, and then we'd get a determination. But uh, that's where we are. So, are you saying that 
the village manager is the person who would make the determination about the fire truck that we're just discussing and not the I, board of trustees? I, well, not, not without the board of trustees in the sense that the board of trustees adopts the budget and any purchasing decisions have to be in the context of the budget. But, so but, the, this, the, but this the, isn't, the it's in our capital budget and it's, we're determining whether or not we can afford to buy it. Yeah, but we have to bond it too. And that's what the trustees decision. Do, do you have, not only do you have to bond it as the mayor said, but you, you define a capital budget. You don't just say, go ahead, Jerry, spend a million dollars on capital stuff. You define what's in that capital, but what the capital budget can be spent for. Well, we haven't really until recently, but okay. we've been a little flexible but, about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, my, my view is administrative and executive authority includes purchasing. Let me say something, uh, if I may. Are, are you finished with finished then, not just? You go ahead, Victor. Uh, um, isn't it the issue a little narrower than that because Let's say in a traditional village uh, that has a ma a ma the mayor with the executive powers, even in those villages, uh, the um, um, general municipal law requires uh, that those are big purchase contracts over 20 and public works over 35 would, would be, would be uh, subject to approval. No, two points. First of all, there are no there are no traditional villages where the mayor has executive authority. Uh, in a non-manager form of government, the mayor doesn't have executive authority. The board would control those things. Number two, the general municipal law says, and I don't know if I have it right here, but it says the purchasing authority it does not define who the purchasing authority is. General municipal law says whoever the purchasing authority has to comply has to bond over those amounts that you, or has to do a, a procurement process, bidding above those amounts that you stated, Victor. It does not say, this is my original memo, does not say who the purchasing authority is. Correct. Okay, so then, but uh, village law does mention that the board of trustees is, is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the authority that approves those large contracts, the 20, so it had, had the village board would be doing the approving had the village board not delegated that authority by by section 76-1 to the village manager okay let, okay let me give let's give it a real practical spin to this right the practical spin to this and why i think this is important is that for the last 20 or 40 years or this more certain contract this this procurement uh, uh, responsibility is a shared one one, one that I think should continue that way. I, I think what we're trying to do here, more, it's, not a, it's not a legal discussion. It's really a policy discussion that the legal um, um, elements or instruments can accommodate to, which is, I think it would be the right thing for the village to have the larger contracts, purchase or works, be in line with what the general municipal law says. Essentially, the board will approve that. And that happens in the town of Mamaroneck, in the village of Larchmont, and in many other villages. So that, so that, and and it is it is kind of a, the, the probably a probably a stand probably a standard that that the the boards approve those larger contracts. Why? Not because we 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 second guess the, the village manager or anything. It's because it does it does in make a better process that those larger larger uh, the decisions. In part, of course, are, are, are the budget and the funding, but the, the whole process of getting the bid out, whatever, becomes, becomes a, 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 you know, you know, a, a process where there's a communication, and at the end of the day, then, then, then you approve it. I've been three and a half but, and, and years on the board, and there's, there's, it's always worked this way with, with no problem, and it just goes, goes fine. It's, there's never been an issue. And I think it's important in our village, and I think I would, from what I understand, the residents to feel that this is how you have some way of, of checks and balances. So, for example, are, 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 are moving on from those contracts that are, that are typically approved by the boards, and I would like them to be, if, if, if at least there's, there's the majority of the board to, to fix the code, maybe explaining it can be done. Actually, the, the, the second attorney general opinion says, I don't know if you agree with it or not, because we haven't discussed it, that, that we can 
we can we can change those or clarify those 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 without referendum. So we could yes, clarify we this. I think this goes to to Mr. Natchez's uh, question that mm -hmm. can we clarify this? I, I think we can, right. and, and just clarify. Uh, and we will just need to amend or, or can we can clarify we section seventy six yeah. to make it clear yeah. that 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 is and 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 also and so we can continue the tradition. It's really three three things. Uh, the the purchase of contra of of of, of uh, goods over twenty, work projects over thirty five, purchase of vehicles. Has been, that has been a tradition in this village, even including the the chief's car and all. I think that's never been a problem because so so that could be could be clarified. And the last one is is, is contracts services contracts, because. Uh, you know, you need this all the time. The, the manager recently uh, hired a, a planner. That's terrific. Uh, he, he hired a terrific company that, you know, in a way was not conflicted and they starting in, in a good foot. Uh, but that contract, uh, at some point, it could be more than 20 or 20, 30. At this point, it, our, our procurement says that those contracts, if they are beyond 30, beyond 10, I'm sorry, 10, just $10,000, um, or could exceed ten thousand dollars, you should do an RFP, based on what the board of uh, trustees uh, considers. But now, that that creates the, all those things need to be clarified. Uh, I I think there has to be uh, uh, an engineering contract of forty five thousand dollars, or sixty, or a hundred thousand dollars. I think those things should come to the board and 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 facilitate that that process. So, so on those three elements, cars. The large contracts and work and work and work uh, uh, um, uh, work uh, you know work uh, contracts uh, public goods uh, public goods public works and and large um, services contracts should be approved by the board and we could fix the code to do that. That's what I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you saying that we should amend our code to allow that? Yeah, we can fix section 76 and just clarify that that is that, that that's how our code works. And we'll keep with the tradition of the last, uh, I, I guess, at least 40 years. I don't see any procurement. I think all our procurement uh, policies have been like that, at least as far as I would go. I didn't go into through, in through our archaeology with, with, uh, with how we've done it, or I don't think we should do some more archaeology of how we, legal archaeology of how we, how we build this, you know, if we, if we can just amend and clarify and move on. The answer is you okay, can. That's, I'm sorry. This is the answer, I, what's that? What's the answer? I didn't hear you. The answer is you you can amend section seventy six one of the code. This is not a situation where um, you're taking away a power from an elected official, so there's no need for a referendum. You can so you can amend it if you want. Absolutely. I think okay. it will be that's very important to to that's something else to look forward see. to. I think it's uh, not, not that complicated. It's a couple sentences on section 76. There's a lot of laws in the, in the way before we get there. I mean, we're trying to pass a lot of laws here. So let's, let's not jump the gun. Let's put uh, this one right behind them because it, it, it is a very, very be right important behind them. Let's just work in an orderly fashion. There's a lot that's been waiting. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying not to do we've it. Just... Been, we've, been trying to, we've been trying to fix the 50 foot setback for a year now, a year. Yeah, right, but that that law has been done. It's just got, got to go. To no, public. it hasn't. Right. We haven't changed the law. No, no, the 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 law, the, the proposed law is ready. But what I say no, is, no, can, it's not. no, it's not. It's not ready. The proposed law was discussed. No, nope. right? no, nope, it's not ready. The last we well, left it, Greg Cutler still worked for us, and he was going to send notice to all the property owners. We were going to discuss it. Mm -hmm. We we never never okay. happened. I, I don't object to putting that one. I, I do think that this this is a it, 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 it deals with. Well, let me finish. It deals with it deals with procurement. So I, I would I would say let's 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 canvas if the other trustees wants to want to put this one uh, as soon as we we clear what we have in front of us. But that law pops up. Yeah, I think we should do it. I think we should be clear about procurement. I think we were elected to make those decisions. We, we were elected to fix the zoning decisions too that we messed up. I'm not saying we're going to do it in front of the 50 foot right away, but I think it should be in the queue. Yeah, it should be in the queue. Of course it should be. In the queue. Well, that's what Victor just asked. I think, no, I think that's Victor what Victor just asked. That's all I'm asking to put it on the queue. I mean, here's another thing. Are we, are we going to start 
having public hearings for passing laws on Zoom? Uh, you know, are, do we have any sense of when we're going to meet? I have no as idea. A group? I mean, I, I don't, don't think we have any sense. sense. That was that was a that was not a, a, a that was a really a, a, a question because I don't have a clue. No, I I, I think that we it didn't none of us anticipated that it would be this long. The, the question came up today. You know, the current uh, restrict uh, suspension of the open meetings law ends on July sixth. Um, the, the several previous times, the governor waited to the final day to extend it for 30 right. days. So uh, my guess is we won't hear until maybe early to mid next week if there's going to be an extension. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm seriously doubting he goes back to regular right. meetings. Yeah, but I'm saying unofficial, uh, officially, right now it's July 6th. I, 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 like the mayor, I anticipate it will be extended, but uh, but for I, several months. I, 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 the governor is uh, taking his time. Uh, issue. I anticipate that it. I, I anticipate that it will be extended. Also, I think the question, though, is if we continue to zoom month after month after month, is there a point at which we want to start having public hearings by Zoom? Exactly. And I think. Yeah. And I think we I think probably we should. I think you we know, have in, to. In sep to say September, once the people you know summer vacation is over, I think you know. We should probably think about having public hearings on these laws, you know, doing other than non-essential business, which we've mm -hmm. been doing. Um, but we should probably start, you know, it's my I, opinion. We yeah, I, start I, I kind of that. agree. I, I think we have to. I mean, yeah, I think I, definitely wait until uh, the fall when everybody's back from vacation. But and then, yeah, I'm we have a public hearing, we, hearing we wait a couple of weeks. Forward. You know, I, I have a real fear that we might be back in phase two before we're in phase four. Or you, you say that. A, we'll have a, a real-time experiment on the 13th. Dan, I can't um, hear you. I'm sorry, we'll have a real-time experiment on the 13th when we have the public hearing for demapping that section of East Old White Plains Road. Yeah. So you can you can see what the uh, the experience is like and how it works or does not work. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it, it might be me, but I'm having a real hard time hearing everybody. So if, if folks could speak up, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. I said, really, that works fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I said is we'll have a real-time experiment with a public hearing on July 13th when we talk about the demapping of Old White Plains Road. So you can see how the process works or you would like to see it work. Okay. okay. All right. That was procurement authority. We're going to eventually change the village code. Uh, tree law, we talked about dogs in village parks. Do we want to talk about that? I don't think so. What? So we're waiting for the Recreation Commission to start to meet, which will be this month, this coming month. Okay. They're meeting, we're, the Rec Commission is meeting next week. No, they moved it to July 7th, Nora. That's not. July 7th? It is, you're right. It's next that's week. That's next week, right? That's next week, yeah. 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 Next week. Week. Can, can I have a suggestion for, for the liaison? Sure. I, I know Columbus Park is very controversial and Florence Park, O'Connell Park, Pape, Ward, Warren, all the other parks are controversial, mm -hmm. but Harbor Island Park, uh, excluding the playing fields, playgrounds, the beach, just, just the surrounding uh, has been, has been uh, um, I think, a, a proposal that uh, can be mm -hmm. worked out. They has to be, of course, the dog has to be on the leash, not existing. Um, but but that, that, that is happening and it, it just allows people to go to the park, walk their dog around, you know, get some fresh air and enjoy it. Some people would not do it otherwise, uh, but, but I, I, maybe, maybe just keeping that one uh, alive would be a good thing. I, there are a lot of, I mean, I see dogs in the park. There are dogs in the, that park all the time. How yeah, about if yeah. I go, how about if I talk to the, how about if we discuss it at the rec committee meeting next week and try to get a recommendation for Harbor Island. Oh, for Harbor, for the 13th. Because we actually, our next meeting is two weeks from tonight, not one week from tonight. Right. Yeah. Right. So I mean, I, I, I'll tell you my, my own personal experience and, and I, I see people with dogs in parks that aren't supposed to have dogs in parks all the time. I was in Florence Park and people had dogs. Uh, the Columbus Park, people have dogs and they're not supposed to have dogs. So they're doing it now. And my fear is, is that 
you know, it, if, if we allow it, then it's even just going to get worse. And, you know, and, and I think I've written folks about the uh, an unfortunate experience I had with a dog off a leash that was very, very aggressive. So, I mean, I, 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 I'd, I'd like to know why we ban dogs from parks. And I know people love their dogs and, you know, and I'll be honest, I don't have a dog and I like dogs, but I, I, I but I don't have one, but, uh, you know, we, we're, we're park starved as it is. Specific to Harbor I, Island, are you opposed to, to dogs on I know, the, I'm, 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 just well, Park Lang, just Harbor Island, are you opposed to dogs on Harbor Island? On the, the, am I opposed to, I could live with the proposal about Harbor Island. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I have a hard time with the community parks because there's playgrounds, there's children, there's dads and kids and moms kicking balls around. And there's, you know, Florence Park, you have the, the big track and, you know, it just, I, I understand the, the, the reason that dogs aren't there. And, and don't take me wrong, I'm not an anti-dog person by, by a long shot. I'm allergic to cats and I, I even like cats, although they make me sick. Uh, but, you know, I, I just, and it might be from, uh, you know, growing up in the city and having very, very few opportunities to use parks and very small parks. And it just seems like, you know, there's, uh, there's not enough parks for people. I, I don't know. That's my concern. I'm just putting out there. I'm not saying we shouldn't talk to anybody or, or the rec board shouldn't make their recommendation. I, I'm just being honest with how I feel. And I would just point out to, to you and to the public who might be listening, this this proposed law would allow dogs for two hours in the morning from seven to nine. It's not gonna be when people are playing with their kids on the playgrounds all day and in the evening. It's just not that. I understand. It's not turning these dogs into a dog park. It's saying the dog can come on a leash before you go to work in the morning. You can walk it for two hours. I understand that, but my point is it's happening now and they're not supposed well, to be. That's, well, just because it's not being enforced doesn't mean you know, if you maybe by allowing it and saying, here's what the dog law is, and you're only allowed these hours, then you could actually enforce it. It might and, make it easier to enforce. And I, and I know it's not in the budget, but I do think, I mean, I know lots of people who have dogs who use the neighboring dog parks, because many communities have them and you can pay a fee. They're not open now. But, um, you know, a dog park is something we probably should be considering. From a long list of things. Yeah, I think that might be a good idea to dedicate a portion in some place. Jerry, right. find us some empty land. I have some. <laughs> and some money. And some money. Don't ask me where it is, but I have some empty land. <laughs> Don't tell you. Okay. All right. Not contaminated, right? It's not contaminated. Okay. It's not. I hope not. It's not so contaminated. Don't need that anymore. Okay. Uh, All right. I have my mission. You have a mission. I have a mission. Okay, the waiving certain, next item is the uh, waiving certain fees for all affordable units built in the village. Now, I thought that we had made, at well, least the majority of us had made a recommendation that we, uh, we do 80%, 60%, and 40%. Of the rec fee. Of the rec fee. Remember that? I think that? we did, yeah. Uh, at, so. At, at, it was at 80%, you got a 75% reduction. At 60%, you got a 50% reduction. And at 40%, it went to zero. So it's tied to it's the tied actual to the affordability rate. of the unit. Because this is only for 100% affordable, so it's tied, to, it's tied to the breakdown of those units. Yes. So if you, you know, the, the, the normal one, 80%, you'd get a 75% reduction. Uh, if you went to 60%, you'd get a 50% reduction. And if you went to 40%, you'd get a, a buy. And it's going to be some permutation of those units of those, because there's any 100% affordable is going to have a combination. It has to be in, in the envelope of 100% affordable. Right. So just, just to be clear, Mayor, what you're saying is if you're at 80% of the income number, then you get a 75% Reduction? Is that what you're saying? No. If if you're at eighty percent of the income, right, you pay seventy five percent of the rec fee. Yeah. So this is a so this becomes a calculation. Mm -hmm. right, let's do it this various way. units. 
just just to make it easier mathematically, if you're at 80%, mm -hmm. you, you get a 25% reduction of the rec fee. Right, okay. But that's, it, how it, does that, in a building with multiple I, units, how does that work? So I think if, if there's like 10 units and two of them are 80%, they get the 75, they get the 25% reduction. reduction. If four of them are 40%, they get a, a deeper reduction. So you take, you take each unit, each, category of units and you multiply that by that number and so there would there's different degrees of affordability yeah, okay. um, the confusion is it's eight they mean 80 percent am i ami 60 AMI. percent yeah, AMI. Yeah, i get that yeah. I, i'm just not okay. clear how it works in a building with multiple units of different ami yeah. it would have to be calculated for each unit it would have to be calculated for each, for each unit i mean when when, when they yeah. when they put in the prospectus or the planning you know thing for using the building they almost always say, all right, this is going to be 40%. This is going to be, you know, they, they do that on, order, on all affordable. Mm -hmm. So okay. On, okay. on a normal all affordable, you get a 25% reduction. On a 60% all affordable, you get a 50% reduction. And if you go down to 40%, you don't pay it. Okay. Okay. So can we can we get that codified so we could have a law to look at? There is the rec fees, right? The uh, rec yeah. fees. Yeah. Bob. Yes. Oh, okay. That's what the board wants for sure. Yeah. But well, I think we Thank you. about that the last time. Thank, Thank you. For sure. Okay. Okay. You can have that to us next week. Uh sure. Weeks. You got two weeks. Two weeks. Thirteenth. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, harmonizing alignment of removal authority for planning and zoning boards. This is difficult for me to do while I'm in the middle of making a decision. It, it feels. It feels weird. I mean, I, I, I don't know how else to say it. You know, I, I'm making a decision. It's a very hard decision. I'm in the middle of it. And, you know, the, there's a proposed law on the books to remove that authority and well, why it had to be done while I'm doing this. I, well, I can explain that because it has to be a referendum. So it can't take, it has to be, we have to adopt a local law and schedule a referendum. So it wouldn't take effect until after a referendum passed, but if we wait too long, we can't do it. So that would be why. Are you trying to get this referendum on the November ballot? Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to have a repeat of what happened four years ago when there was a whole kerfuffle about scheduling it too late in September. But I, you know, I think honestly, this, you know, we have a situation where um, the entire board of trustees appoints people to the planning and zoning board, and. Be because it's not harmonized with New York state law, it wasn't four years ago, when the mayor removes. There's nothing to prevent the rest of the board of trustees reappointing somebody. I mean, removal and, har removal and appointment authority should always be harmonized. And I think that we have to, we have to solve this one way or the other. Well, I, mean, I, I, I just don't see the pressing issue right now because in our 125 year history, this is the first time it ever happened. Well, because we have to be think, being mindful about the fact that the November election is coming up and we have to do this in a timely fashion. Why, why this year? Because I wouldn't want to wait another year. I think this is, a, this, is, this is a disconnect in our code that I think needs to be repaired. How many other villages have this? I was going to ask that. Uh, it, I think that in most cases, if you, in most, I don't know what I don't know what other villages have had a referendum to take the appointment authority away from the mayor and give it to the board of trustees, which well, is what we did. The so, uh, no, many, you, many, the, but, the, but there's no point. Have changed the law to remove the mayor from the removal of the art. I don't know because I, I'm, I'm certainly not going to go village by village. The point is, we did. We took the appointment authority away from the mayor. And we should have harmonized the removal authority at the same time, and we didn't. Typically, removal authority and appointment authority are the same. Uh, and that's 
what I, I think we need to I don't, do. I don't know if that's typical because I, I don't have any research to back that. I just have you saying that. So if you uh, look at, for, for instance, think, if you-, if I'm, you look, I'm still talking, Nora. That's how it works. I was still talking. Uh, I, I think that New York state law, in their wisdom, gave this to the mayor. And I think if you, if you, if you have to consider, if you give it to the whole board, what does that do? I mean, do, does it make it more political? Does it make it more, uh, you know, subject to, I mean, imagine trying to hold a hearing with five people. Okay, well, I have done some research on this. And in New York State town law, the entire town board has appointment authority and has removal authority. In, in New York State city law, it's up to the charter, but the removal authority and the appointment authority are the same. In New York State village law, the appointment authority for planning and zoning and the removal authority are the same. When we changed our appointment authority, we should have harmonized the removal authority at the same time, and we did. Okay. Can you see how this looks, though? I'm in the middle of a decision about whether to remove somebody or not. You're making, proposing a law to take that power away from me while I'm doing it. It, it seems coercive. Well, it wouldn't take that power away from you. No, it, it would. It, 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 it also seemed, it, it would, Nora. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't for this particular instance. For this particular I mean, instance, right. It would. And it, it almost feels like you better make the right decision. I'm not, I mean, Tom, and, that's, that's not my intent. My intent right, is to right, harmonize right, right, the law. But I'm sitting here trying to make a hard decision, and this comes on the agenda. I mean, it... it, it Sorry, I'm a cat. I mean, when would this have to be passed by? We would have to pass it by August or September so that we could schedule a referendum. So this is going to jump ahead of everything else? No, it's going to get it. That's why I'm putting it in the queue, Tom. There's a lot of stuff in the queue. Well, That's why I'm recommending we put it in the queue. I can't I, put I, anything in the queue. I, 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 I can tell you how I feel. It feels, it feels hard. It feels like, you know, I, this has been an extremely stressful uh, duty that was foisted upon me and I'm trying to do the best I can. And this feels like a, you know. Uh, well, Tom, it's not meant to be personal. It's meant to, it's meant to correct an error that was identified. Our, you know, our extra counsel did identify this. It was meant to correct an error that should have been the error the error was that four years ago, when there was a referendum to take the appointment authority for planning and zoning and give it to the entire from the mayor to the entire board of trustees, the removal authority should have happened at the same time. But maybe that wasn't an error. How do you know it was an error? You're just assuming it was an error because you don't like the outcome. I'm not, Tom. I'm, the reason I'm assuming it was an error is because generally appointment authority and removal authority are the same. It's the same in village law, it's the same in town law, and it's, it's, at, it's, it's the same in city law, depending on how the charter does it. But they always go hand in hand. I mean, there are NICOM articles about this, there's case law on this, and this is- but this, this, is, is, this is a different situation, removing somebody than appointing somebody. I mean, having, think, of, think about the cumbersomeness of having a hearing in front of five people. I mean, what, what, okay. I mean, what happened? What happened? I, I, Tom, I, I understand that, you know, removing talking. somebody is cumbersome. I understand that. But I also understand the reason that these, that the, that the approval authority, the, the appointment authority and that the removal authority is the same is because you, for instance, could remove someone and the rest of the board of trustees could reappoint them. Well, you could. I mean, that would be kind of silly, but I, I could probably remove them again for the same reason. I don't know that I'm just saying this is the reason but, that they are harmonized. But this is, but let me just, the history of this is we had an opinion from our village attorney who said it was the mayor's decision. We hired another attorney who gave us the same decision. It just seems to me like, you know, everybody wanted this to be one way and now we're going to legislate to make sure it is one way because it, it wasn't that way under the law. And it, it, it's a difficult time to be doing this. And I, I just, I, I have a problem with the timing. Uh, like I said, it's the first time in 125 years this happened. So I can't see why I can't wait the next year and then make it part of a mayoral election. 
I, I just, I'm, I'm, it's not personal. I think that the, that the authorities should be harmonized. I also think, I also think it's, we need to harmonize the issue of the clerk pressure, which we've talked about at some, you know, for some time. Uh, when have we talked about this? We talked about it I, months ago, Tom. When? There, you have met, you have memos that were written. You know, yeah, we talked about an executive session. Part of that is it. Just I'm talking. We didn't talk about changing the law. Yes, you're talking about trying to have a referendum to change the law. And there, I'm sorry, Dan. Are you talking about a different law? I'm talking about the clerk treasurer. You, it, yeah. The, that was in the backup for this for harmonizing. No, this is what this isn't about the clerk treasurer. I'm proposing it to be part that it should be done I at mean, time, and it's but part of the back. It, Tom, it's part of the backup. That's it. It's not part of the law that Nora put in. That's not Nora's proposal, but it's in the backup of harmonizing. And there were memos that from Bob regarding, you know, what's taken place in the past and how things were structured and when it was changed. And there, there was a suggestion that that was an error at the time and then how to correct it. And so uh, at the, why we're harmonizing, I would like to make a motion on that one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's back this up. Is this about the mayoral appointment? Or is it about the clerk treasurer? Because the clerk it's treasurer, about, th there, there is no disharmony in that. That's in village law. It, 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 there's no at all disharmony in that. Uh, now we're getting apples, oranges, and bowling balls. No, that's not quite true, Tom. No, there's no disharmony in there, Dan. That's, that's you, have, you have the power to appoint one way and the power to remove another way. It, Dan? Village law throughout Westchester County, New York State, the mayor appoints the clerk treasurer. Why would that change? I see, I don't agree, but I see the argument about harmonizing planning and zoning. I see the argument. Okay. The, the, the only reason to change the village uh, appointment of the village clerk is to remove that from the mayor. And why would you do that? Why would this community be the first community to do that? I think it, why the same thing we do for, for the uh, village manager, uh, the clerk treasurer reports directly to the board. Uh, the same thing that we do with the, uh, the police chief, which is uh, the board of police commissioners. Uh, these are things that I think, you know, could all be done the same way. Okay. Why? why there's no other. I, I, be, I, be, I believe that it's all harmonizing. And in order to do it, you need a referendum. And in order to do the referendum, you have to start it now. All right. But let me ask the rest of the board this. Are, are, are you, Nora, Victor, and Kelly, is this about the clerk treasurer? No. Nora, it, it Victor? It certainly wasn't in my mind. My recommendation was about the, um, my recommendation is about the um, removal, the removal, the removal of the board, planning yeah. and zoning. I think the clerk treasurer is something that we, we actually had discussed that and it's all tied up in the same backup stuff. We had discussed that in January, 2019. Yeah. Okay. My question here is what's this law about? I think the one I recommended, I mean, I think Dan ha has a separate point. My recommendation is the one I'm recommending is that we harmonize the appointing and removal authority for the planning and zoning boards. I think Dan is, is introducing a different thought, which I'm not sure is wrong. It's just not part of, it's not part of what I had typed up. Not part of what you've typed up, but it's part of the backup that was provided with it, which talks about to it. Yeah, because we've talked about this before. We've talked that about it That is correct, before. but it's, it's in there. And that's why it's that's why I'm bringing it up. I think we talked about it before Kelly was on the board. Yeah, but, but we talked about it in, in terms of when I when I appointed Augie the last time. Mm -hmm. uh, there there was some discussion about it because there was a, a Scribner's error in a law that the village of Mamaronic passed, but it didn't change the authority of the village mayor. And that's why we talked about it. Mm -hmm. 
And there was a difference of opinion about what should happen. Well, there, was, there, there wasn't a difference of opinion. It was what was legally right and what all those people wanted to do. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> there was a difference of opinion. I mean, I, I just don't know where this clerk treasurer thing is coming from when we're, we're only doing essential business. We're trying to get stuff, yeah. you know, on, on the agenda that, that, that I mean, and, and then because Dan slips it into the backup or somehow yeah. it, it gets into the backup. I put, I, put, I, I put it in the backup because of the memos that, 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 uh, that talked about the power and authority. It was, okay. it was part of backup that Bob had provided. Um, I think when he first became village attorney about what all the authorities were. And that's, that was what that was in. So you so didn't I, intend I, you I, I can tell you this. this I can tell you this. That, that uh, if, treasurer. If, if you try and pass the law about the clerk treasurer, I'm going to be against it 100% and I'm going to campaign against it. If you try and pass the law about what you're trying to do, I'll pretty much stay neutral and just stay in my opinion. But if you do them together, I'm going to try and beat both of them because this looks, looks like a, 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 a usurpation of the power that's given to the mayor in New York State. And why would I be the only mayor to lose that power? And, and that really makes it personal. It looks like Victor's <laughs> been trying to talk for some time at this point before what? I make a comment. Yeah, be yeah, before you, you commented, I, 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 was, I was just following on the, so I'm, I'm now back to the, to the uh, harmonizing, uh, appointing and removal authority. Um, and I did, I, did, I, I did find something in the memo that, that, that we're talking about, which is the, the first analysis that, that Bob made for us for this board in June 22nd, 2017, and it does say at some at the end, page five top, it says the power to appoint includes the, the power to discipline and remove and mentions a case. The appointment authority therefore has the power to remove. So, so that, that, that is not kind of out of the blues. Um, um, you know, I think actually this is, this is, this is not an easy, an, e an easy decision. And, and I, I don't think anybody wants to, to be in, in a, in a hearing to remove anybody. No. Whether no, it's no. the mayor uh, or, or the board. I, I don't think that is the purpose of this. I, I think the point is, is what, what would be the best structure, whether to harmonize it or not. Uh, and some decisions are made by one judge and some appellate courts are, are, are three judges. Some other circuit courts have larger judges to make certain other decisions because actually of the complexity and, and the issue. So, I think that's probably what what uh, what Nora was trying to get to, so that so that there's no disparity of who appoints and who removes. In any case, it's going to be difficult. I do think that I I do see benefits in align in aligning because the the case law goes both ways, and and it it eventually harmonizes um, you know kind of where where you stand on this. Let's hope in another 150 years that this doesn't happen. 125. Okay, 125. <laughs> Go for 150. Uh, and, and maybe 150 as well. I could uh, let's 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 or maybe more. Maybe it never happens again. But 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 to, but to but to but to to clarify uh, the the uh, all the, the powers of the mayor and aligning them to what the village should do in 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 in. in Seeing what the, what the what the um, uh, different roles have to be with the village manager, uh, even the clerk. I think we we in in the early in in the, when this changes were made, that's when we decided that the uh, clerk was going to be supervised by the by the village attorney by the I'm sorry not the village attorney you don't want to supervise him, the 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 village manager. Previously, it was the board who did that. And if I remember correctly, at some point, actually, it was the Board of Trustees entirely who appointed the clerk treasurer. I remember that reading that. That was never the case. That was never the case. I, I well, remember the reading that. This board, the mayor appointed. Okay, but I, I remember reading that because there's an extensive amount of memos. I, I remember reading that, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, 
Uh, but I do think that that this 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 issues this issues are, are are central to have those those uh you know kind of um, uh, you know have to have a through a real village management or council manager form of government. I think it it it, it is it is something that this village has been working on for 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 decades. So okay. continuing continuing well, along this path, I think it's not a bad thing. And and if that if that if there if there's a majority to to align those powers, I, I think I'll be I'll be I'll be okay with that. Are you talking about the planning and zoning? I'm talking about planning, planning and zoning. Okay. Now, if you want me to talk about the clerk, no, I, I think the the problem with the clerk is that our code is inconsistent. And actually, when we passed that law, and and we tried to change the code, and you guys wouldn't change the code, because when we passed that law, there were a lot of we were doing there there was inconsistencies in in in, in in how it was viewed, I th I read I read that section of what the board of trustees did. I have it, and I thought we were doing the right thing. So so I was not kind of passing it as a Scribner's error. We well, thought we were doing it. Uh, I was on the board. I voted that law. So that's what I'm telling you, Tom. That I we did. But, but, but Victor, you have been told that that law was not in line with New York State law. That you know, that, that was, and it also wasn't what was voted on by the voters of this community. Correct. So I understand that we would require a referendum, but still so our code is, it will, it, it, uh, the code is inconsistent. So, so that issue has, been, has not been cleared. The, the code so is in, has to be clear one broken. way or clear. We tried to fix the code and you abstained. We were going to vote on the code that night yes. and it, it went down because, because it was two to two. Because I'm telling you, and you're not listening to me. No, I am listening. I knew. To you. I knew the. I, I I voted that law. We tried to fix the code. We tried to fix the code. There was never a referendum about the clerk treasurer. Never. So let, let's set that aside. That never happened. There was a mistake in drafting of the law, and the clerk treasurer was put in there. We tried to fix that in our local law. We've been told that our local law is wrong. So are what you say now is we should go back to the voters to try and fix what our local law got wrong? I think that's what, what Dan Natchez is suggesting. That's what Dan said. I'm asking what you guys want to do. Tell the lawyer what you want to do. Is, 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 just, is, just to wrap up what I think, I think, any, I think perfecting this village manager form of government, to the extent we can do it, making slow progress, I think it's a good thing because this is, this is, this is the project that this community embarked, embarked on, and it's a, I think it's a good proposition for this village, which okay. is so complicated, right? Show me a village manager form of government where the mayor doesn't appoint the clerk treasurer. Show me one. Well, I have to do the research, mayor. I, don't have, I, I haven't gone in this. I, I've asked Nightcom, and they said there's none. So, you know, why today? Why now? Why this? Why me? Well, that can be explored, but... Okay, we, let, let, let's, let's separate the two things, but I think that is also an no, un unfinished things. business that, that should be picked up as well. So what, is there a consensus among the members of the board to tell Mr. Spolzino what kind of a lawyer you want? Nora, do you want to have the lawyer you propose? I absolutely, yes. I'm telling you, that's going to be your easiest path. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? My sound went out. I said, I am telling you, that will be your easiest path. The easiest path of what? Nora's, Nora's I'm sorry, she Nora's blinked out. Instead of the clerk May I, or did I, you couldn't hear me, Kelly, or Tom? I couldn't, no, you. Okay, yes, I do. I, I do think that we need to have the referendum to harmonize the removal authority with the appointment authority. With respect to the land use boards or talking about the appointment of the clerk treasurer. Are you limiting your recommendation to? Well, there are two separate recommendations because I mean, my, I, I want to harmonize the powers. Uh, I want to finish what we started for, for you. I mean, I think, I mean, that you were involved well, in that referendum. I don't think anybody anticipated that there would be this, this disconnect. And, but, but with respect to the clerk treasurer, are you also saying that you want that? 
I actually don't think it's a bad idea for the clerk treasurer to report to the entire board of trustees, but that's, you know. So what do you want to do? Let me just I'm just, I, I'm, you know, Tom, I, I, I said my piece um, and I'm happy to discuss the clerk treasurer component too. And um, I think Victor makes a lot of sense. I, I do think you, that we have, I, a, we have a village manager form of government that's not like any other because we have adopted things in different time frames, village law changed. So I think Victor has thought about this. Victor and Bob have thought about this a lot. They've gone through a lot of the documentation. That's one of the first things Bob did when he became village attorney. And, you know, maybe there is some cleanup to do. Can we narrow the first one? Did you, Cause you have, you have a proposal. He has a lot of yellow. Mm -hmm. If you remove that yellow, then this referendum proposal is ready. I don't know. I mean, I used, I took the referendum from four years ago and I modified it. Well, maybe the village attorney should oversee I, I Absolutely. I'm just, I just, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a word document. I think it's a word document. I just yeah, modified it. It's going to need some corrections to form, but if that's, tell me what the substance is. And I'll get it I mean, done. This, this is the substance and the, and the yellow highlight is, the yellow in bold is what I added. Um, everything else was there previously from the previous referendum, and um, I have crossed off what I thought was no longer um, necessary because they had the background. Because previously, I mean, what, the law was changed in 2010 to yeah. give the appointment to the mayor from the Board of Trustees. It had been the Board of Trustees up until 2010. That's true. All right, so you're asking Bob to change the law for the removal authority of the mayor for zoning and planning. Is that right? Yes, please. Okay. I'll, I'll support it. I, I, I think this, this kind of connects with what we did four years ago. All right. I'll support it. Bob, you got that? Got it. Uh, so then, then the other question, Tom, and this is not aimed at you personally, and you seem yeah. to change that to you, but that's a, your your prerogative. Uh, this this stems from uh, issues that have been discussed back in 2019 and before that. Uh, so I would like to propose uh, that we change, you know, that. Uh, um, that we have the uh, power to appoint and remove the clerk treasurer uh, by the board of trustees and um, uh, have the village attorney prepare a draft to it. If there are people, if there are enough to support it, fine. And if not, fine. You That's know, the way it goes. We, we have not looked at this. There's been no research into this. There's no disharmony here. You know, th th this is, you know, one of these, you're, you're talking about making a major, major change during a time of COVID without any real background there was background that we discussed you know back before kelly came on the board and is in the backup the, the, the background the background if you read it the background says that the appointment authority rests with the mayor i, I understand what and it I'm says you that there's no other village that has done this i can't I, I, i'm telling you I'm going to come out against all of this really hard if you do this. I understand that, and that's your prerogative. It is my prerogative. And, we'll and you're happens. taking it personally, which no, is I'm not taking it personally. your prerogative as well. Dan, you're, tr you're, you're sitting here telling me I'm the only mayor in New York State that's going to remove have, have this power removed. You're what? making that statement. I don't have the, uh, I don't know that as a fact. Well, then prove me wrong. Uh, I don't need to. You, you do. It's, you what, it's what I think. I, it's what I think is the best for the village. The test case. Why should the what has happened that this needs to be fixed? Other than that, this board wants that power for itself. There is a reason that New York State has a mayor and trustees, and there's a reason that there are powers delegated to each. This board seems to want all that power. So what the hell's the point of having a mayor? Just take the, turns every week who sits in the middle of the chair the, the 
this village is governed by a, a board of trustees. I understand how it works. The mayor and the board of trustees. The mayor has certain powers. The mayor You're has trying to take them away. For no, with no apparent reason that's been explained here. It is to make it, is, it, it, it is to prevent me. potential issues, not that you, that you would succumb to it, but there, that they can be ten, potential abuses. I don't think that that's a reasonable thing. Are, are you saying that I would abuse something? I said, I, it was very clear, Tom. Then, then what potential abuse? Nothing to do with you. And it not, I'm not suggesting that you would succumb to that. And, and what? I made that very clear. Why, why would a board of trustees not potentially abuse something? It would be much more difficult to do that. Uh -huh. So the question is, I understand you're not in favor of it. Have you, have you gleaned that? No, where the rest of the board stands and I'd like to you know, pull the board. I'm not in favor of this at all. I don't okay. think that, yeah, I'll leave it at that. What about the rest of you? I think it's absolutely worth more discussion. What do you mean more discussion? I mean, I think it's worth more discussion. I think, I, you know, I think that I, I, I think a case was made. I think, I think when the law, when Victor voted in, in that other, those other changes that were done, I think that was 2017, the thought, they thought they were voting on you know, the thing. That's what they thought. I mean, I was- even on the agenda tonight. What? Okay, I'm not. I'm saying this that's why I think it's agenda tonight. I was talking. I think it's. I think it's worth more discussion. Maybe we think about it and talk about it again. So I think let's put it in the queue. How about we put it in the queue? Yep. So, do you want Bob to prepare the law just on a planning and zoning? Yeah, put it on the. If, if that, if Trustee Natchez wants to put this back again in an official way, we can pick it up whenever he, he thinks it's ready. And we'll put it on we'll, the agenda with backup. We will, we will review it from, from that angle. Right. Okay. So, Bob, could you have a, a law that we can review in the next, about the planning and zoning at the next work session? Yes, I can. All right, the, the, the next up is revision to local ethics code. Uh, okay, th this goes back to what I was saying before. I'm in the middle of something and, you know, I think that what we should start out with is what do we want our ethics code to do and what do we want it to say? That's what we did when we changed the code in 2009. We started out with where we wanted to go as a board and as a community. And I don't know if we have that here. Um, Maybe well, we get, I, get people. I, I put this in. on, I put this on and I, I did it because um, I had been working with Nikon to try and get some training, you know, which we did in, in December. Um, and that was before any of this other land use board member matter came up. And they had recommended the two laws by which is um, Cohos and Rensselaer, which are very similar. I think they have um, good definitions, good explanations, and that's a good starting point. And I also, I think, I, and I can't find it now, but there was a, a letter that was supposed to be back up, a letter that we received from a bunch of residents who suggested that we have, um, make a couple of corrections, including having um, a group of people to work on our zoning code, on our, on our ethics code, which I know is what happened in 2008 and nine, that there was a group of, there was some trustees, I guess it was Kathy Zabel, who was the mayor, and one of the trustees and some lawyers who had experience at ethics, uh, in ethics matters to get together and to review it. And I think that's maybe a process that we should start. Mm -hmm. The ethics board has made some recommendations. Um, I think that there should maybe be a group of people who look at this. It's not a quick really? process, but I think we should do that. No, I, I, I agree with the uh, forming a group, maybe of five members of the community. Mm -hmm. and, you know, hopefully, I'm going bold. Hopefully, lawyers with uh, ethics experience. I, I agree with that. 
be great well, to find. I, th I think well, we had. We well, actually we, had. There we is had, someone in the community that has that someone in the community who applied to be on the ethics board, and I think that. You know, I know what you're talking about, and that would be a good start. And, I, um, I think we should get yeah. five people. Yeah, I think that's fine. No more than five. You know, they have to, because they can't meet anyway, right? I think it should be both lawyers and people with human and human resources that have had the similar experiences. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, let's just um, put out put out a blast to uh, seek you know letters of interest and resumes. Okay. I, I just want to comment. I I I I looked at, at uh, the new codes that you proposed. You said Nikon gave them to you. Mm -hmm. I I do see a. A benefit in, in 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 staging up our code. I think it's the definitions. One of interest, for example, it's clear, and I think similarities in the two. They're uh, very, very the, the, the section on disclosure is really kind of three paragraphs, very clear. The section on recusal and abstention is four paragraphs, very much. Of course, this 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 were probably this actually is not that new. They're 2010. But but still, I, I do I do see a lot of benefit. I think uh, our code was very progressive in its time, uh, uh, but I, I do find it I do find it much more cumbersome. It was and I and I don't want, of course, to identify little uh, problems, but uh, but there are there are and, and there are they deal with 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 provisions that are, in a way, kind of day to day uh, of day to day importance, especially for those who, who sit on on land use board. So. So I, I, I think uh, this convinces me that, that there are, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, that, that, uh, that uh, the committee or whoever, how we decide, can, can, can get started right off of this to, be, to and then do more research. And, and, and just that will be a tremendous, and then we'll, of course we'll, we'll hear from the ethics board and we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, I, we'll, we'll start a process that, that, that will end right. up in something that is beneficial for everybody. I don't think we should limit them to these two laws. I think we should let them uh, look yes. far and wide. Right. Uh, what I'm, you know, what I'm when, saying is just this we two were, offer we, a lot of, of advantages. That's we what were, I'm saying. Uh, we, we, when we passed this law, because uh, I was on the board with Mayor Seewald and Trustee Hofstetter and Trustee uh, Rabinowitz and Trustee Ryan, uh, when we passed it, we were looking to make a law that would put us on another level that would put us uh, kind of like Caesar's wife, we'd be beyond reproach. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't want to backtrack from that, that goal. I mean, I, I think what we have to do is have a goal, right? Uh, and the goal should be that, uh, you know, that there should be transparent uh, ethical standards and understandable ethical standards. Uh, but stringent ethical standards. Uh, and this, this, this law was passed in the backdrop of the perception of the community that that wasn't happening in the village at the time. So I just want to give uh, some historical uh, background to what happened in, uh, I think it was 09. Yeah, it was 09. I think this is one of the last uh, laws I worked on before uh, I left the village. Man, 11 years ago. And I, and I also think that um, the ethics board, I mean, the board of trustees and the ethics board sort of knew that they needed to develop some materials, like some like right. guidance materials that were going to go through with this. And so, and I think that that just didn't happen. So right. the ethics board has asked us many times to revise the code. But yes. And, but I also, in 2009, the ethics board, you know, the first, the first ethics board under this new law had this agenda of, you know, decisions they were going to publish and advisory opinions that they were going to post. And they, the only thing, the only thing they did was actually create a plain language guide. So I think they thought they needed to provide guidance and that hasn't happened yet. So 10 years later, the guidance that was anticipated with this progressive new law never materialized. And so I think for that, for that point, everybody agrees there need to be some revisions. And it's the time to start. Uh, I like the idea of for, forming a committee. Yep. All right, and I agree, Mayor. Not, part of the mandate will be yes, not no, uh, no backsliding, no regression. It will be actually to 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 make yeah. it clearer, better. There's, this is not to soften it; is to to make it clear. I think that's that'll be their mandate. 
I think that that's a good goal. Okay. Uh, staff over time for attendance at land use board meetings. Well, do we have any staff attending land use board meetings anymore? Sure. You, the, the issue became, and we looked at um, the overtime that we pay staff o on overtime basis to attend the land use board meetings. And uh, that's a fairly substantive number. I, I don't remember what it was. I know Jerry worked out some figures on that. Um, and in many communities, you either have a planner or in a village attorney, you know, uh, or some other consultant, but you don't have uh, a combination of them. Um, uh, maybe in the city, when you get to a large city, maybe you need them. Uh, but it seems to me that uh, that we're that I'm not sure that the what the entire value is, uh, and that can't be handled if we more streamline the process uh, early on. Um, and I think that that becomes you know a substantive issue uh, to consider, and that's why it's on the um, agenda has been for months. Jerry, you, you may you may have some feelings on that. I mean, we talked. Uh, so so I, there's no streamlining. Either staff attends these meetings or staff doesn't attend these meetings. Um, I don't know if we've ever talked to or asked the boards that staff attends whether it's beneficial to have the staff members that are attending continue or not. I get, you know, I get the, the planner part. Of course, I agree with the planner part and the attorney. That's an easy, that's, that's an easy one. But um, to have secretary or to have a coordinator there, uh, I've never spoken to any of the chairpersons of these committees to see if they believe that it's beneficial or not. I don't know if anyone else has uh, as well, but there's no streamlining it. Either they attend or they don't attend. And if they don't attend, how will it impact the board and the members of that board? If from my from my watching of the meetings, it, it would seem to me that that staff uh, sometimes provides uh, historical knowledge, uh, guidance, and day-to-day uh, -day, you know help with moving the meeting along. They do assist. I just don't know if it's you know. I'll add that when I was on the ZBA, um, I thought having Betty Ann there was crucial. I mean, because we would have questions of, was this paper submitted? Was this, was the notice provided? And she could always look it up and provide the answer. I also thought that it, you know, at least at the zoning board, there were so many issues concerning building permits and what the building department had done or interpreted that having building department there was also, you know, really necessary. There were a couple other differences too in that, you know, prior to, I want to say what, uh, mid to late 2019, uh, you know, the village planner was not a department head level position. So that individual was earning overtime. Um, so, and then we also had an assistant planner who was attending meetings and we were paying him overtime. So there were structural changes made in the organization, which uh, pr you have, know, uh, caused us to not not have the need to pay certain overtime to village staff attending these meetings. Um, plus, you know, we've also been pretty, uh, uh, you know, I try to be pretty tight about who attends these land use meetings and mm -hmm. who's authorized. So I think right now uh, <laughs> we have uh, uh, one member from the planning part planning office who attends the BAR meetings as their secretary, uh, Betty Ann, and then uh, the acting building inspector attends the uh, planning and zoning meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's it unless, uh, you know, there's a request from a board to have another member of staff attend. So, um, mm -hmm. It's not, not quite true. And on the planning board, you have, uh, you also have the village planner and a village attorney. Yeah, so the, village, the village planner is not paid overtime at this point. So, you know, that's, there's no, that's not, that's not a issue from a budgetary perspective. Uh, the attorney, I mean, that's, I and mean, well, it's, it's, that's escrow to the extent that it deals with specific applications. And as far as the land use um, 
um, secretary, um, there were some issues we discussed and resolved um, that only, you know, a small amount of time before the meeting and after the meeting would be approved by me for overtime to try to streamline that, that overtime number. That was reduced significantly last year. Yeah, and we also you know, really looked at in the 2020-21 budget process. Uh, you know, Greg had prepared the budget for the planning office. I worked with to put together the budget for the building department. And you know, I think there were some significant reductions in overtime that we budgeted this year. Correct. I'd have to review it, but I, I can get those numbers for the board. So the streamlining has occurred. It's just, it's the board's, you know, whatever the, the board wants to do, it's either the members of staff attend or don't attend. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the opinion of the land use board members are going to be at that time. You never asked them, so. Well, maybe, maybe it's worth checking with them. Yeah, sure. It'd be good. I'll talk to the chairs, see what they say. Get back to you with their impression. Uh, no problem. Your Make impression? sure you my email so you can see their response. Thank you. Thank you. And may I may I add again? I'm, I'm going to emphasize this. I I, I hadn't realized uh, the contract that you that you presented with us last week, two weeks ago. Last week was it? Yeah, last week. Last week, yeah. Yes. Now I understand it, uh, and I have never worked with a for or against or in any connection with this firm. I have seen some of the presentations actually by coincidence, one of the ones that they have assigned to a village. Yeah. Uh, I, I think is, and actually, you know, you know their, their, their traffic consultants we know has terrific. This person is, is very well known and yeah. some of the work that, that they can do for us can be escrowed properly. So I think we're moving in the right direction. I, you know, I'll cross my fingers, start to talk, knock on wood, but I, I do he, I do see here that you have two things. You have site plan, special permits, subdivision, essentially land use boards, and you also have to support the village. Yeah. Board of trustees in case we need a planner. Yeah. That's terrific. We already have. Yep. So, so on, on, on the planning board, most of that could be escrowed. Mm -hmm. And on our front, I mean, that's a top firm. And separately, we have never used them, but now we have at least some retainer uh, uh, another environmental planet of, of, of high caliber and, and has not worked for the for their usual developers. So so now we're lining up, uh, you know, good consultants and let's let's hope. Uh, yeah, to help you know, things things along. Your planner. I agree. This can all be streamlined, not just, uh, you know, in, in general. So so thank you, Jerry, for doing that. I think that yeah. could, could mean a lot for us. Sure. So that's terrific. I'm glad. So we good? I'll talk to the board chairs. Is that okay? Yes, Sounds like a plan. Thank All you. Right. All right. They may have some ideas. I'll take care of that. Okay. Policy issuance for temporary certificate of policy issuance for temporary certificate of occupancy. So um, this was something that came up. Um, months ago, we've had problems with uh, people with that get approved site plans uh, and go through the process, and then they feel that because the, when they get the buildings up, that they should get uh, a CO or a temporary CO, and the rest of it doesn't seem to comply. By the you know, and it's been a very difficult time with some some particular uh, instances. And in, uh, for instance, in Nourishell, you don't get a CO and there is no temporary CO until everything is in, you know, from your landscaping plan to your building plan to your zoning plan, you know, to the surveys, the elevation certificates, everything that's involved. So the question is, we, we, ha we have a provision in the code that allows temporary COs. And the question is, uh, should we continue that or should we temper that? Well, this is a situation where I would like to have seen a little backup to you know, find out what the building department feels about TCOs, what uh, TCOs 
you know, benefit and what the detriment is. You know, I feel like this is a question being asked in a vacuum. Uh, I know in New York City, they, uh, they get TCOs all the time. Uh, they give TCOs on elevators. Uh, so I, I don't know what the cost benefit analysis is here. Uh, I know we had one resident, Mr. Teeger, complaining about this, uh, but I don't know if that translates into having a problem with the law, but I'm willing to hear from uh, you know, people who have had experience in this uh, about whether that's a good course. One of the things I think is that um, usually certificates of occupancy or, you know, TCOs are given for, you know, something like a modest, like a few, like, like the punch list, a few things that have to get done. Um, we've had TCOs that have gone on for 10 years in this village. We've had them that have gone on for a couple of years. And I think the problem, I mean, I think we should tighten, I think we should consider and talk to the building department about this definitely, but tightening our um, requirements for them because that is the leverage we have. And once the once the developer gets a TCO, it's very hard to take that away. And um, you know that's what we've talked about. We talked about tonight with the with the tree law that you know you don't get your church, you can't get a certificate of occupancy until you've complied with the tree preservation plan. I mean that's the you know that's the carrot and the stick. They want their TC. They want their certificates of occupancy, and we want them to build according to what we've asked them to do. So I think it might behoove us to talk with the building department to see how we could tighten them up. And I think the fact that we've given them makes it hard for the building department to say no sometimes. Well, I think having a TCO is also a stick that you're holding over somebody's head because banks make you want you to have a CO before you refinance or before you, you know, move ahead and borrow money on other projects. They won't let you borrow money if you just have a TCO. That's uh, true, but, but but ours says not to exceed, exceed six months and we have we renew them and renew them and renew them. And it may be a point at which people aren't looking for financing and they don't finish the, the punch list that we need. So I think, I, I just think we should have a conversation with the building department and see if, they're, if they think there's anything. I think it's a good idea to have a conversation with the building department, but I'd also like to see what other communities are. Uh, we just heard about one community. Uh, I, I mean, that's why, you know, there should be you know, a little, let's get a little more backup to this so we know what we're talking about. That sounds good. Let's get some more information. Agree. All right. Agree Thank anyway. you. Hey, Mayor. We've been going on for two and a half hours. Should we have a five or 10 minute break? I can't hear you, Victor. Should we have a, we've been going on for two and a half hours. Should we have a five or 10 minute break? I think it's. Yeah, yeah take a, take, let's, take a, let's take a personal break. Let's take a 10 minute break, please. Okay. I'm going to time us 10 minutes. Start. 10 minutes, oh. right now. Yes, thank you. 10 sir. minutes, go. You, you, your time is on. Yes, Jerry.
your valuable insurance can be taken away. That's why it's good to see Mutual customizes your insurance to what matters to you to protect the most. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Liberty Mutual Insurance is a proud sponsor of Antiques Roadshow. And by contributions to this PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. When Roadshow visited the city of Brother Me Up back in 2006, fans from near and far brought their timeless records to town. My friend and my great grandfather were on music on big stages, and John got on the Civil War. You're not kidding, are you?
You froze. Your screen froze. Mine? Your your screen your screen froze. Am I back? You 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 are back. My connection <laughs> is horrible. Do you have? Are you plugged in with a cable? Yes. That's my only advice. I'm done. It's Jiggle in with it. a cable, but when I go like, it's just it's in and out. It's bad. Have you tested your router? Is other people uh, in the house streaming? I, I've never had this problem before. I don't know what the problem is. I thought maybe it was the thunderstorm. We were, I was getting horrible thunder mm -hmm. yeah. and rain. Yeah. All right, uh, roll back. We're back. Okay. Uh, before we go in executive session, 604 Halstead. This is a, an issue that came up where a gentleman. All right, I'm, I'm recused from this, so I'm gonna dip out. Will somebody just call me and let me know when to come back in? Okay? Okay. We'll Thank call you. you. <clears throat> Okay, where are we? What is this about? This is not about 604. This is about uh, the Halstead properties in uh, the village. The village owns um, some properties. Uh, it involves anywhere from 40 to 70 properties and approaches to deal with uh, requests similar to what was re requested for 604. And uh, the the village, uh, in, you know, years ago, uh, the planning board uh, recommended and decided and the board of trustees agreed uh, to a potential taking of properties uh, in fee title, uh, which they did uh, for um, potential widening of Halstead Avenue. Uh, that was never done. There uh, wasn't a reason necessarily given as to why it was never done. Uh, he came up in title searches. So the question is, that was arisen that arose is how do you handle uh, properties uh, that you may or may not deem that the village wants to continue to own or not own? And <clears throat> in the past years, when, they're pro when village properties have come up for uh, discussion about being sold, uh, there was a question of, you know, how to do it and uh, from uh, long before I was on the board. Uh, but the, the approach that was taken at that time was to do an evaluation of the properties and first determine whether it was deemed to be excess or not, whether it had a potential for use or desirous to maintain or and, uh, utilize or not. And if you decide that it's excess properties, then to um, do it do appraisals whether it's one or more depends on the uh, specific situation and make a determination of uh, what to do uh, in the Halstead <clears throat> in the 604 issue that came up originally that brought this to light you know for the Halstead Avenue area um, you know there, there were uh, I think significant issues that this was uh, the deepest property or one, either the deepest or the second deepest property in the entire line that was taken. And it was in the, uh, somewhere in towards the middle of the line. Uh, uh, and the question is, if that were sold, what does that do to the other properties, et cetera? So the issue from my vantage point is when you deal with these types of questions is to set forth a procedure that looks at the entire entity uh, and uh, evaluates it uh, uh, from a vantage point of how to move forward one way or the other in a manner that is equitable because the lambs that the, the village owns are, all those lambs are um, uh, owned and held in trust for the residents and uh, the in, uh, taxpayers of the village of Amarnik. Okay, well, Usually when a community is getting rid of excess property, it's a plot, it's a house that didn't pay its taxes. Uh, sometimes it's a building that they no longer need anymore. 
this is a particular uh, situation because it's a little slice of properties that are connected and to seem to be one for the whole of the property. So you're talking about a 10 foot slice here, a five foot slice there, a three foot slice somewhere else, which wouldn't lend itself to the normal procedure of like you, you, you get a house in REM and you get the house appraised and then you put it out to uh, a public auction. Uh, I mean, it, it wouldn't be fair to uh, try and publicly auction three foot of somebody's house. Uh, I don't think it would be fair. I, I, I think it would be poor public policy. And I think it would just be, you know, unfair. And a lot of these people probably don't know uh, that they have uh, a situation like this. That's why I felt that if we sold uh, the land to the gentleman from 604 Halstead, we would at least have a bidding price for where we could start discussions with these people about how to make their properties whole if they wanted to do that. Uh, but you know, I, I don't know what procedure there would be for selling three foot of land uh, that, that borders Halstead Avenue that is connected to a piece of property that goes 120 feet back. Well, and, and it's not as if the village would be auctioning off that strip of property. It's the village's um, property in case we can tear down the building if we want to expand the road. So as a preliminary issue, the village would have to decide we want to expand the road. That's the preliminary question. This is not at all like these other um, pieces of property that are dealt with in this in this public auction manner. It's, it's just not. And that's why when this came up months ago, um, the village attorney drafted a memo explaining how we would handle this. I mean, it seems that perhaps Dan is suggesting that we adopt a different way of handling it um, than what our attorney advised. I don't know what that is. Let me jump in here since I, I see it's my turn, it's the fourth Christine. Uh, I, I think actually it. what, what, uh, what uh, Dan is saying and what probably I, I think he's going is that there's a, there's a, this, this is a two, two step process. Not how you, the second one is how you sell it, how would the right thing, but the first pro, uh, part of the process is, is you have to declare that you don't need that anymore, right? That decision was done by the village and I believe it was 1931 based on certain, um, projects and determinations in, you know, about widening and the possibilities of widening, not just the road, but the sidewalk that we don't know. Uh, so, so we, uh, I mean, I'm not opposed of looking at this and, and, and determining that we really don't want that, th those properties anymore. And then we will find a way to relieve everybody, whoever wants it, we cannot, we cannot force them. But what, what was clear from this materials was that there is a, not just 40, but it could be, this is map two. There's a very good map that shows, it's part of the public documents that shows how many properties on the line and it has all the little properties listed and it's all stamped and it's very clear that, that, that there was work done before this. So, so I'm just going back to step one, which is you don't need this anymore. And it's not just maybe a little bit of the building, but what was actually taken by the village in 1931 and for what purpose does it that does that that property that we own maybe just a part of a sidewalk uh, maybe that gives visibility to the street so even if we're not to expand it we should know what it would what would it would be the consequences of just saying we don't need that those those uh, that land anymore I think that's what 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 uh, what I think Dan Dan is trying to to identify or to the extent he identifies that piece, I, 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 I agree that this, 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 is a, this is a larger exercise. Whether it should be done now that we're in this situation with all the priorities, et cetera, I, I, I doubt that, but whether it should be done as, as, a, as a process where people have, have a, you know, the maps in front of them, where there is a community engagement about what to to, to, to do and of the possibilities. And if the, if the decision were 
uh, to move forward maybe in the future with something or at least to have those possibilities or maybe just waive everything, then let's waive everything. I think we're, we're uh, some, some trustees were just inclined on just waiving the right and, and, and saying, we don't need this. Uh, uh, then then the, the, the discussion became on, but how to, to approach a, 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 a prize, uh, you know, uh, some, some compensation. But I think before you we even go there, it has to be publicly discussed. What is the well, general public think about this? Why was it done in 1931? And, and if we don't need it anymore, then it will have to be a, an entire process, which as I said, I don't know if we, if we should undertake that now, but it has to be, if there's enough um, you know, uh, traction to do it, I, I would not oppose it. And I will engage on, on, on deciding whether this is a bad idea and we should just you know, give it, give it, forget about this. Okay. Uh, what would we need or what would the board need or want to make a determination that we don't need it or we do need it? What I would be criteria? That, that, that's something that we need to fathom out, but I think at the very least we would need to go to the planning board uh, because it was their recommendation back then to do something. Uh, it would, uh, we do have we a traffic. Backup? Do we, do we have backup about that, Dan? I'd like to see that because it seems like maybe there's been some research done between the last discussion and this one. Yeah, about you might have to put on a backup. No, it was in, it was, it was it, there was a planning board resolution back in 31. That was part of the backup that was provided. I mean, I remember seeing bankruptcy searches and for the mist for the lebeau couple and all kinds of stuff in the backup last time that's not on the backup this time was removed all kinds of information. Uh, I, I i don't i don't know about that all i know is about what we were given originally and the issue okay well, well it just it was it let me finish please so part of it is you know you know if you try to decide how to do this i would I would think that since the planning board took an action before that we would go back to them. We have a traffic commission now that's very much involved in um, uh, 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 not only the roads, but in sidewalks. And, you know, there was a recommendation of a possible use by the village planner uh, that it might be good for a bike path. These are all types of things that, you know, need to be considered before we just decide not to. You know what, let, let me just clarify something because, because Mr. Cutler just said that at a board meeting. I wouldn't say it was a recommendation. He was just riffing off the top of his head. I said it's a so, possible now use. Talking, then. Um, now, I'm talking, then. now I'm talking. So but you've interrupted me, but no, go ahead. You, didn't. you were done. No, I wasn't done, but thank you anyway. You, Dan, you, you stopped talking. That's usually a sign someone is done. And then I, I picked up. Oh, go ahead, Tom, be my guest. I don't need to be your guest. So, you know, the, the village planner did not say that we should use it for a bike path. He said that he threw that out. You know, we, we can't divine what happened in 1931. This isn't a planning board decision. This isn't a traffic board decision. It's a decision of the board of trustees. You know, if, if, we, if, we, if we're talking about the possibility of widening the road, you're talking about millions and millions of dollars. And you know, th that, that's our decision. <coughs> just this, sending it to different, you know, if we decide to widen the road, then we could send it to these other boards of commission. But there's, a, there's a, a large decision to be made here that I don't think anybody really is gonna make. This whole thing about sending it to planning or traffic, it, it's just more of a delay of making a real decision about what we wanna do here. No, we, we, in, in this, I thought a decision had been made in terms of the specific re request of 604, that, but that's, that's a different thing. The quid, but it's, if you're talking about 604, which is what it appears that you're talking about. No, not at all. I'm talking unless about- I, Unless I'm all. misunderstanding you. I'm talking uh, about in the totality. In its totality, the issue becomes, you have a, a large strip of land that involves multitudes of properties. And the question is how to handle it 
in first determining whether or not we want to do anything with it, we want to keep it at you know, land bank, or if we decide that as a board that it should be excess, uh, then how do, where do you go from there? There are two, there are right. two different decisions. And the first decision that this board has to make is whether we want the land. And that's not a traffic to community. expand the road. It, 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 that, that, this will be an, a never ending story. You know, the board has to make a decision. Is this something that we want to hold because it might benefit this community sometime in the future? And I think that that's a, that's a hard rock to push up that hill. Yeah, Victor, you're muted, you're muted, Victor. Okay, I think I found, I found, uh, I just went to the, to the backup of the meeting and I think it's called deeds. And I'm sorry, let me, am I sharing now? Yep. Can, can yeah. you see a map? Yeah, I see it. Yep. Yeah, this, this is the, this, this map is, uh, I think what we're referring, what Dan mentioned, I was referring to it when I spoke. I don't know if he, this is exactly what he's talking about, but it's, 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 it's in the backup and it shows that this was part of that analysis that was done there. It shows 41 poly, uh, properties with how much was taken and why. It has a approved Mamaric Planning Board, October 1931. And it shows the line here. So um, it would need to be, the, the, anal the question is whether we don't want it anymore I see that we may encroach on buildings, but we also just may own certain frontages of the properties that may provide some benefit already to, to, the, to the village. I don't know. I, I, I'm just, of course, I've been through there. I've driven to there many times, of course, but, but uh, this is at Hillside Avenue, actually. So, so yes, of course, I've driven here many times. But, but, uh, but uh, I don't know if, for example, here, I haven't gone there lately to check if this little piece here, for example, or here is, is, is something that is sidewalk or not, what was done, and that should be, should be part of the analysis for, with, with all the backup uh, that why did the village do this? And if there's none, then we'll, we would have to be picked up from at least the maps. So the, I think that's not to extend too much. I think that's what's, what's happening. We do have enough information to say that this was done for a reason. Well, so, so it sounds it. like then we would need a new survey to go see, is this sidewalk, is this building, but you know, right? Yes, of that and, 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 and maybe more. So somebody would have to lead this, this, this process as well. I just don't think, I don't think we should spend money doing this. Yeah, you know, this, this started out, you know, uh, two months ago, we didn't know any of this. None of us knew any of this. Uh, I, I agree with Kelly. I wanted to benefit the taxpayers by making some money on this. I don't want to spend money on this. We had a chance to pick up some coin, you know, all right. To, you know, I understand the board didn't want to do it, but uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me to spend, you know, uh, time of, uh, you know, who are we going to have? The, the, the new planner we just had out there doing this. And uh, yeah, it, it just, it, it, if, if, if we can't make a decision in a timely fashion about whether or not we're ever going to widen the street, it, it just isn't worth the effort, in my view. I mean, nobody else is asking us for it. Uh, Why spend money on it? <clears throat> If we don't want to spend money, that's fine. Then we just keep it. Yeah, it's a shame because we could have made money. Except that if you did that, Tom, what would happen is you would, in effect, cut out something in the middle of a line. Mm -hmm. And that would change the value of the rest of it because nothing else could ever be done. Dan, so, so I, I, I think that in all lifetimes, nothing's ever going to be done there. And I don't Nothing. think any rational person or reasonable person who knows anything about village economics or anything like that is would, would, would disagree. Um, I, I heard that argument made when there was a big move on to sell the, uh, uh, the Daniel Warren uh, school uh, when it wasn't being used. Yeah. There would never be a, a time when we would need it. 
Right. Another apples and bowling balls analogy. No, but it's the same concept, Tom. It's not at well, all. Dan, one was a huge building uh, which wasn't attached to anything else, freestanding that could have been used for a multitude of purposes. It wasn't a, a, a three foot sliver of land. It, it, All right, I, I, I don't have any uh, desire to spend money on this. Okay. To, I, I mean, we would, so we would be getting a survey and all kinds of plans about whether we want to expand Halstead Avenue, widen Halstead Avenue. Why do, I mean, why can't we just say as a board, we don't want to expand Halstead Avenue or we do want to expand Halstead Avenue? The I mean, th th this is so absurd to me that we would go to the Board of Traffic Commissioners. I can imagine myself saying, here's something we'd like the Board of Traffic Commissioners to study. Would we like to e extend Wyden Halstead Avenue by inches in some cases, a couple feet in other cases? The village would maybe do a survey on this that would cost tens of thousands of dollars. And then we'd like you to weigh in on whether the village should expand the road or not, because someone had offered us $25,000 for us to say no, but we turned that down. So now we're thinking that maybe we wanna know what we wanna do with this property interest we have. I mean, it's just absolutely absurd. Well, that's your opinion. I think it's just the opposite. I think just selling it outright would have been absurd and would, would, would have significantly affected the rest of it. And it does, doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, widening the avenue. It, it does. Wh whatever. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to understand all of that. That's part of what needs, needed to be evaluated. I think that's it's a big not, part of the problem. Tell you. I, I have no use uh, for spending money on this. It would be a waste of taxpayers' money. I'm not suggesting we do spend the money on it. I'm suggesting that you need to have a process in place to be able to uh, dispose of uh, village land. I think we do. There is a process to dispose of village land that isn't a three foot sliver attached to another building. And it's happened before. I mean, I, I think you're, you're trying to explain away what happened with 604 by no. this. Yeah. But um, there is a 604, process. 604, as far as I'm concerned, 604 is not even, was not, was not what was to be discussed, but that's yeah. up to you. Okay, we got to move on. Uh, there's no consensus to spend money here. Could somebody please call Noor and ask you to get back on the line? I'll call her. Time to rejoin. Bye. Yeah. And since this was not about 604, Nora could have been on it. That's right. Hi, Nora. Hi. Okay. Uh, we did pretty good tonight, actually. Um, that's because I threatened another meeting. <laughs> I'm scared of a meeting and we don't finish. <laughs> but Mayor, Mayor well, I, had, I had a topic that is, it, 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 I think it won't be long because it's just an introduction, but I, I put it uh, on the agenda. I think it's really timely. And I'll, and I'll just, I, because I think you were going to jump out of the order because- I, I was, we, well, I was going to go to executive session because we said we go to executive session 8.30. Yeah, but if, if with, with your indulgence, I, I really want to at least introduce All right, uh, get it on. My, the idea on, on, on village policies, actions to addressing racial discrimination and not all, what we could do about it. It's just, a, it's just, a, it's just an initiative that I think we're all keen on, but I'm just mm -hmm. going to propose a plan, if I may. Um, may I proceed? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going, I, I just, uh, give me one sec. Mm. Here, I, ha I have an outline, but I'll give you what, what my idea is. My idea is that we, 
we, we, and I, that's why I didn't want to have an initiative because I think it should not be me or any of the trustees. I think it should be a, a collaboration of, of the mayor and the trustees. Actually, uh, some pieces have been discussed. We talked about Juneteenth way before. I mean, this, this, is, this is a very large and a very, very important conversation. Uh, so my idea is as follows. I, 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 uh, I would, I would uh, explain the outline. Hopefully the, the trustees think about it. And by the next meeting, we, we, we um, collaborate on a resolution that is a consensus resolution, I hope. Uh, and, and we'll do the following. Uh, the summary is that we commit our government, all levels of government, and how to engage the community in reviewing our policies seeking to eliminate all forms of discrimination. Uh, the whereas clauses um, could go on and on and on. I think the basic is that we identify, recognize the crisis on inequality racism happening. Uh, and I think the key is to narrow in a, in a resolution saying we're gonna do something about it, that we, that essentially we're gonna do four things. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, uh, but it, but it, the, the important thing is that it, it will be uh, for all village Mamarna government, the board of trustees will have to work on our own things will involve the community boards, land use boards, commissions and, and, and committees through the liaison or through the land use or to the chair. Uh, of course, village manager would have to lead his own staff and engage his, his department heads. And we'll have, of course, the communi engagement community. It all comes to this. Do four things. Review the policies that we think need to be addressed. Engage the people we need to engage to have a conversation, report if we need to report something and reform if we think that's appropriate. And the key thing would be very simple, uh, a, a very simple timeline that could be repeated, but at least you'll get this conversation started because the time is it's pretty historic as you all know. So we, we all levels of government will review their policies in, four, in about two months, like in the long, sum, the long summer. We'll think about it. We'll think about what proposals, what, what to look into in, in, into our work. We should engage whoever we need to engage. And that will be starting now, but focus on it around September, October. If there anything we think can be done, education, trainings, establishing a day to celebrate some ideas, you know, just all inclusive. Let's bring all the ideas, we'll put, them, put, put them in our policy that, we, that, we'll, that we'll put forward. And then anything that we identify that needs to change will change. Maybe through the process, some department will say, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna prevent this. Maybe some of our commissions, we're gonna take their lead, but we, we allow every, every, every piece of our government and our community to, to engage itself. Uh, actually, that's it, that's it. So, so uh, I, I think there's been many ideas circulating. So, so this is just kind of a more of a, a template, an idea to capture all those things, and, and a timeline that, of course, is for discussion. But I think this could not go for a year. It should be, it should be contained to the extent of you know, some uh, identifying and, of course, embracing that we're going to do something about it. Uh, let's say, even in our planning process, uh, as we now engage in the last review of our com comprehensive plan, look how our comprehensive plan is going to be it really lead to a more equitable, fair uh, pro, uh, you know, community and, 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 and make this uh, a centerpiece of every decision we make. So I don't want to carry too long because it's already the, my four minutes that the mayor and all of you gave me. So thank you for, for the opportunity. All right, I mean, that, that's a, a, a bare bones start. I think we have to bring in more community uh, input because you know, I think what we have to make sure we do is have a policy and uh, have input by those who have been aggrieved. And I think we really need to hear those who have been aggrieved. And I think that, that, that that's probably what we haven't done enough in this country. But uh, it's a good start. Thank you, Victor. We have the screen I'll, back, please. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll share this with all of you and, and we'll pick it up in two weeks. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, we're quitting at 9.30, so let's get to work. Uh, who wants to make the... I, 
motions. I can, I have it in front of me. Do you want me to do it? Please. Okay, so we have, we have, we have, we have I, I had suggested a four, but we're having three items. I thought we needed, anyway. First, executive session advice of council. A, land use board matter. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to go into executive session pursuant to 101 one F of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to the medical financial credit or employment history of a particular person or persons or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person, persons, or corporation. B, Hampshire Recreation LLC versus the Village of Maranek, the Village of Maranek Planning Board. Motion to enter executive session pursuant to 105 1D as it relates relates to proposed pending or current litigation, and C, village manager investigation of complaint, a motion to offer to enter into executive session pursuant to 10151F of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Okay, that needs a second. There was something on, on the old business that uh, looked like an executive session item in the middle of the, is that out? Land use attorney and, and that issue? That was L. I don't know why L was oh. in the middle. Oh. I don't know why L was in the middle of the other because. Oh, okay, that was supposed to be it. Session. Why was L in the middle of the other? Why is that an executive session? It's L, L, L. It shouldn't, it, it, because it was put in the wrong place in the agenda. But why is it in executive session? It shouldn't be. I think it was just if you want the option to talk about it, it in executive be. session. It's, it's a policy so, issue. Yeah. So I think, I think we'll, I mean, this is this discussion that has been been for a while of full-time attorney proposal. You. That is definitely a policy decision. So it should not be an executive. It should not be an executive uh, session. I think the the other issue of land use attorney that has been has been discussed a couple of times that then that piece of it could be an executive session. I think that's what it was meant. So this should be split into. We got three items in executive session now, and we got. We got I think it connects. Minutes. Forty-five minutes. I think it connects. Add add, uh, add the second piece of it, the land use attorney as as L. Victor, I can't hear you. Add you should add only the piece that says land use attorney, not 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 full time attorney, and then we'll just deal with the four things and 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 clear the desk for today. I I, I don't understand. So if you want to have the discussion of full time attorney, leave it for two weeks from now, but because it should be open and the this any discussion of land use attorney, do it today now. And we and we and we clear the deck and we know what why we, is that different i think it's different because that that the first one is a policy matter the other relates to to something that we have already discussed all right i mean if you want to make you want to you should amend that so i'll amend the motion yeah that's what i was picking so that we clear the okay. we clear this this agenda for a while well, then we start a new Tick tock, we're 45 minutes is ticking yeah, away. So, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's, let's amend it. Okay. So, we'll be, wait up. We'll be scratched that motion, right? The motion that, the motion that uh, Trustee uh, Lucas read as amended by Trustee to four. I will make that motion. I'll second. Now, Augustino, call the roll. Trustees Winship? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. DeFore? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. All right, I'll see you in executive session. Okay. How do I get it? Do I, do I leave, just leave this, or what do I do? Yeah, we have to leave to go back, because we have to come back in. Another? Okay. Wait, is mute?
foggy. How'd you get in here so quickly? I have two machines on. Ah, there we go. I thought I was going to win the race this time. I thought I had. Okay. 45. Okay. Hi. Oh. Nora, we need Dan. Dan, turn your. Uh, Dan's mm. here. <clears throat> Son of a gun. Where the hell did that go? Oh, there I am. Uh, everybody on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've just come out of executive session. In yep. that session, no votes were taken. Um, I need a motion now to end the Village of Marinic work session. So move. So move. Second. Augustino, call the roll. <laughs> Trustees, Winstrip. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The floor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Yes. And good night, everybody. Good night, good night. everybody. Good night. Thank you. Have a good, good fourth. Night.